Uh, let's see. Good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, April 18th. Thank you, 18th. <laughs> I call the select board meeting to order at 622. Please stand and join me, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And announcements. The Worcester Regional Transit Authority is seeking a rider community representative to sit on the uh, WRTA advisory board. Volunteer it is a volunteer one-year position with voting rights. The, those, I'm sorry. No, he wasn't. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Right. Those interested should contact the select board office at selectman at brookfieldma.us to apply. The deadline to apply is June 1st. Uh, tonight's meeting is being recorded by the town. Is anyone else here recording? Mr. Kelleher with the fancy gear. All right. And let's see, uh, Brad, could you run the warrants for us? Yes. Uh, FY2421 payroll, $197,922.81. FY2421 accounts payable, $455,791.41. And this week there is no withholding warrant. Okay. All right. Moving on to the agenda. Uh, agenda item number one is the host community agreement with uh, Sun Fusions for so their manufacturing operations. Yes. Me and KP didn't properly connect. Okay. Um, I have a draft that got delivered. I think it's sitting in my email right now. I think it got delivered this afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, I have not had a chance to review it or have any discussion with Nicole. So mm -hmm. she's supposed to, or it may, it may be in my email, it might not be coming until tomorrow morning. Uh, it needs to get reviewed, discussed, and then sent back over to Mr. Fromm for his counsel to review. Okay. So, so we've made some progress, but we're not there yet. So we should um, consider, consi is this likely to be May 2nd our, at our next regular schedule meeting two weeks from today? I we could do it. I'll, I'll put it on the draft agenda. You can, if it's not ready, you can let me know. Well, it'll be ready before it's the second of May. Okay. Do you want to do it next week? Yeah, I'd prefer to do it next week. Um, if, if we, we can. already have meetings Thursday and Friday next week. Okay. And we also have the town. We have the town administrator interviews tomorrow night. Okay. So I know we have meetings next week. It so. might be something we can handle in open session before one of the meetings next week. So if we have it by. Monday or Tuesday, let's consider putting it on the agenda, but put it on the second for sure. Okay. And then if okay. we can pull it in, we will. Okay, that's fine. Just uh, let me know the, uh, I would say the uh, the other matter, we want to start on time, so we're going to have to get here before 6.15. We're going to have to be able to finish the open session before 6.15. Okay, that's fine. All right, All right. we'll figure that out. Yeah. We can, we can talk about that offline, that's agenda setting. Yep. Okay. All right, no action. Do, uh, do we need a motion to pass that over, or was that was our discussion sufficient? Uh, I think that discussion was sufficient. All right. All right, so um, number agenda item number two, request to use the banquet hall for public meeting, um, Sun Fusions. And so that was a request from Mr. Fromm, and I believe the, um, uh, Mr. Fromm, is that is that meeting state required by state law? Yes. Okay, that's, that's. Yeah. The detail I yeah, wanted. One, it's a public meeting, and two, I don't think we've denied any group for any reason thus far. Well, I it should have my been one here. my one concern was that because it was a private company, that I wasn't sure. But given that it's required by law, I think that's sufficient justification to uh, yeah. that it's it. There is a rationale for use of the public space for that meeting. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Yeah. All right, and uh, let's see, and that's on Wednesday evening. So uh, let's see. I would say we should. Um, uh, Mike is, the clerk's office is open until 8 o'clock on Wednesday, so the building is open to the public during this time. Okay. I think, so I think just with the stipulation that. I think the other question is, is do we have any concern that it will exceed the room capacity? Okay. I, w I was going to get there. I would say that um, who is it. capable of, who, what, do we know what the rated capability of this yes. room is? What do you think? What's no it? idea. 175. This room? On the board I would. We might want to get that know. redone because that's because before that, that went in. But you know what? One seventy, even even. Why do I have to be the fire chief today? <laughs> okay. So. 
Nobody um, noticed. <laughs> 100, so 175, I mean, I, I think we'll, I'm given that it's, so I, d I doubt that. No. I would say that I think if you if you get forty, I'd probably be surprised. Well, after, no, yeah. coffee, pastry. You know, <laughs> may maybe we could do like a lottery about yeah. how many Brownies? people show up. I can tell you. I've got some gummy candy. <laughs> All right, so probably not that kind of. Guy. I, I know. All right, so I, I think with the uh, stipulation that there's a hard stop at eight o'clock when the town hall closes, and, and the, with the general expectation that the uh, yeah, that the room is in good shape when it's done, I think that this there's no reason to say no. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the request for the banquet hall use for the public meeting for Sun Fusions. Second. All right. Um, any further discussion? Seeing as there's none, all in favor of the uh, of approving the uh, use of the uh, of Beth's motion uh, regarding this room in the Sun Fusions meeting, please say aye. 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 All right, that is approved. Uh, Karen. Yeah. Um, we, Next time, next time we have a request for use like this, please remind me to put the date of, and of the meeting in just for um, in the agenda for, for clarity Absolutely, yeah. and also just for reference. Because I'm looking going, I'm looking at the agenda. I don't know when we approved it for, and I had to go look it up on the side. Okay, so perfect. thank you. Yeah, uh, let's see agenda. I, uh, so that's number two. Number three, 18 Common Street accessibility requirements uh, discussion. Uh, Beth, this is your lead. Oh, okay. Yep. So first of all. Um, let me just see, is the email included? Yes. It's in there. Great. So, um, I received an email from the library director, okay, um, and I believe that you forward it to the other members for yep. other purposes, yep. so you, you all have seen it. Right. Um, so, and, and, and you know what? I, I didn't come here ready to cite all of the various and sundry mass general laws associated with this, but and however, okay. Um, we have a situation where private entities who have no obligation under open meeting law who are using that building for their own purposes with the permission of the library, groups that support our community like the community club, okay, like the scouts, okay, um, are getting harassed, and it is harassed, okay, uh, by Mr. Holcraft um, when they, um, are using that building and they are under no restrictions they're private groups their meetings aren't open to the public there is while it's you know it's nice if an area is is ADA compliant it's not governed by state or federal law they are private entities they have no obligation to meet accessibility standards and they don't need to get harangued by somebody who's got no business being at their private meeting. Okay. Um, and then from the Attorney General's site regarding meetings, right, um, it's, it's kind of their opinion that we've overstepped our authority, right, uh, to give a dictate of no meetings at 18 Common Street, okay, or no open meetings at 18 Common Street. So, really? um, yeah. So even for even for committees that are creatures of the select board, effectively that are appointed by us. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> so all, so, and this is the this is the open meeting law information. Um, so. You know, 
Well, I think what this is saying, and what I've understood before, is if somebody requests accommodations, then the accommodations have to be made. Absolutely. But the person who requests the accommodation has to have standing. Okay? Yeah. So somebody yeah. who is not registered or certified as disabled has no legal standing to demand additional support for use of the building in order to attend a meeting. Right? I'm a disabled vet, but I can do stairs. Okay? Mm -hmm. I don't personally have standing to demand assistance to get to an open meeting. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if my condition deteriorated to the point where I couldn't do four stairs, then I would have standing, particularly if it's posted in the open meeting law, in the open meeting indicating, you know, who to contact for access, so long as there's appropriate notice and it's up with a, an appropriate amount of time, there's no reason why even our committees can't meet there, okay? And yes, we appoint the committees, but mm -hmm. we appoint them, they elect their own officers, and if their officers determine to hold a meeting in that space, can we forbid the use of that building? Yes. Do we actually have any means to enforce that? No. So this, that's the concept of weak central government. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. We, we don't actually, we can advise but the chairs are, and then we can unappoint people if we yes, don't that, appoint. That, that, it sounds like you're, you're saying that's, that would be our only recourse, and that's a, that's a blunt tool. It is a very blunt tool, mm -hmm. right. So, um, you know, they've sent information to the town committees, right, um, with the time change from 48 hours to seven days, so they're complying with the mass.gov requirement. So any, any, any one of our committees that's obligated to adhere to open meeting law who chooses to use that building instead of being able to post only 48 hours before the meeting must post sev uh, seven days prior to the meeting mm -hmm. to give somebody who has accessibility needs or requirements the opportunity to contact somebody in order to get somebody to assist them into the building appropriately. Okay. Okay. Um, now, I have also spoken with the library director because originally they were going to spend private monies from the friends of the library to just go ahead and get a more accessible route in for June of this year. That was the original plan. Um, I have since discussed with Brenda that um, they've um, reviewed some of the options for doing that and consulted with people with grant writing knowledge and people with knowledge relative to Massachusetts um, historical preservation type, um, both rules, regulations, and laws. And it may be that we may not be obligated to do full ADA compliance accessibility into that building because not only is it in the historic district, but the building itself is on the historic registry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So their recommendation now is that we hit pause on the physical changes to the building for accessibility and apply for grant money for a study to determine what level of ADA access is required given the historical status of the building. Mm -hmm which makes sense. So, and it would in particular make sense for us to back off of our edict, not to use that for any open meetings, given both um, the recommendation by the library, which has control over the building, to do a seven day versus a, a two day posting if they choose to use it for an open meeting. And given that, you know, the, reason for pausing on the ADA movement forward of the physical changes to the property is due to historical preservation mm -hmm. and, and striking the balance between those two competing, call it requirements, 
okay, or call it, you know, needs of the, the community. So my recommendation is that we vote today to allow our um, committees to use the meeting space if they so choose. Um, if we want to advise them not to do it for something that's like a public hearing, I think that's reasonable, mm -hmm. but I think it's an advisement. Um, and I, I do think that we need to send a formal letter to Mr. Holcraft to not harass people, particularly people who are associated with organizations that have no obligation under what he's screeching about um, to cease and desist. Um, and I think we need to explore, you know, what um, options we have to curtail the behavior towards uh, private entities and private people who need to not be treated that way when they're on our public property. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm in agreement that it would, it seems obvious to me that if the town is allowing meeting in a space, then the allegation is that the space should not be made available because it's not accessible. It's not the, it's not the problem of the group using the room. It's the problem of that. It's like, it's like dealing with my five year old, or my daughter when she is five years old. It's like when I said her brother could play Switch and she didn't want him to play Switch, it's like she'd get mad at him. It's like. I said he could play Switch. You need to talk to me about that. Don't get mad because I said your brother could do something and you don't want him doing it. Right. You need to talk to me. Don't. It's like that's that's like juvenile behavior. Right. So, but I I just don't want people to feel threatened on town property when they're doing something for an entity that's not associated with the town and hence don't have any of the obligations that it is being yeah. indicated. Now, now what this means is that in order. To be consistent with your understanding of the open meeting law, the agenda would have to be posted and it could not be changed inside that seven day window. So because they could take stuff off, they couldn't put stuff on. That makes sense to me. Okay. And, and that's, that's reasonable. It's like you take something off, you're not making anyone want to get in there. Correct. You, do, you can't add or change an agenda item. Right. But you may remove items from the agenda within seven days. That that to me is reasonable because that still means that no one's going to get surprised with a last minute agenda change within right. like fifty hours out, and all of a sudden and, it's and, like. And I would just recommend access. rather than taking stuff off that they would pass it over. Mm -hmm. you know. But fundamentally, yes, it would lock their agendas. So. And I think that I think that's a that's a reasonable method of adhering to the law. And that, is, and that is consistent with, I, I talked to Kathy LaRocca, who had uh, has been the town's ADA coordinator in the past. Yep. And uh, what you're telling me is consistent with what she told me when I discussed this issue with her a couple months ago. Yep. So that's what our obligations are. Mm -hmm. I think it's an interest of the town to make the best use pro possible for the community of the properties that we have, right? Yeah, I mean, right now we have two main meeting areas. It's like, if you want to meet in the kitchen, that's the third one, but that doesn't hold many people. No, not anymore. No. It was different when the kitchen was a, a fairly big kitchen, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, and a good example is the, the, you know, the historical committee met in the building because of the fact that both here and the police station was taken on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, you know... We have to conduct business, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. one of the ways that we conduct business is by having a space to conduct business with. Yeah. So. And with the under with the understanding that we need the space, and if someone needs access, it's up to the whoever had intended to use that room. If they're asked for an accommodation, then they need to move to another location at a time with the other locations available. That well, they either, they either need to move to another location, or quite frankly, they can do things like, and, and this is one of the things we can empower our town employees to do if somebody actually needs an assist in we could actually you know we could see if if our um you can go as far as to, to authorize the emts to assist people in that need assistance with the stairs mm -hmm. that's I, what mean, we did in the past. I mean yeah i mean honestly <laughs> honestly that's that's the 
that's what a lot of towns will do for for things like that because they either have ramps or they they have the knowledge and the capability to move the person in any of their appliances in and out of the building. Okay. So that's um, I didn't think that would be an option, but if it is, then it is. Well, I know it. I, I know it is when you're doing. I know it is for ADA accessibility when like um, uh, political committees are doing it because the. Uh, the town committees, um, both the Republican and Democrat, they have to hold their meeting in an ADA accessible space or make sure that there's sufficient um, assistance available for people that require it. Because fundamentally the law is intended to allow participation. Right. And therefore if It doesn't have to be convenient. It just has to be that, we, that somebody has to get you through the door. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what's the motion? So the motion Comment, is comments. Nope. I, well, it's, it's your discussion. meeting, but my understanding um, is we're not taking public uh, comments. Well, I'm so sorry, it says discussion on the agenda. It is discussion among the board, Mr. Banish, not among we are uh, in general. The board is not taking public comment, and at the moment, I uh, I'd be happy to discuss things with you afterwards. Because you're, you're is that totally avoiding another aspect of the reason we bought 18 comments. Mr. Mr. Vanish, we can discuss this afterwards. Okay. It's I'm, I I I. I'm gonna go. Okay. So. Oh well. Yeah. All right. So um, the motion. So the motion would be my motion is that um, I'm, I've got two issues that I want to cover. The first mm -hmm. is I'd like to make a motion that we reopen 18 Common for use by. Uh, town committees, mm -hmm. if their chair so chooses. Subject to? Subject to the seven day notice requirement in their meetings, including freezing their agenda. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Second. All right, uh, let's see, for discussion, if there's another motion, can you give me a hint as what it's gonna be just? Uh, you said there were going to be two, and you gave me the first one. I just, well, that's what, what I, I, I'm not <laughs> asking you to make the motion. I'm just telling. It's like, all right, I'm good with it. I'm good with this one. It's just like, uh, all right. Is there any, any among the board? Is there any discussion amongst uh, on Beth's motion? No. All right. Uh, let's see. I then all in favor of Beth's motion, please say aye. 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 And your next motion. My next motion is that I would like to make a motion that we consult with KP regarding our options about the perception that we have a public official harassing private individuals on the property and identify what our options are. Relative to impacting that behavior. That's the motion? Yep. Second? <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. I'm getting ahead of myself in my head. But you are getting ahead of yourself in your head. <laughs> That's the motion. That's mm -hmm. all the motion I is, know. is that I we know. consult Let's, right. with to, to the talk, lawyer. To talk to the lawyer. Uh, let's see. I am all right. If there, because uh, I consider this a written complaint. Yes. Okay. That's, I consider this that's pretty clear. a written complaint. Mm -hmm. I would like to consult KP regarding this written complaint mm -hmm. about what our options are. Okay. Fair enough. So. Okay. All right. All in favor of Beth's motion uh, to uh, to talk to KP Law about the situation. As, to, as she mentioned, please say aye. 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 So, and that's what I got. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. If we go quick, we can bang on. We, we get everything after. done. Yeah, we can we can we can skip over number five until seven o'clock since it was listed for seven o'clock. Um, and then oh, and just so the I don't know if all the board members know, but the uh, the advisory committee did not post their meeting, so they will not be meeting with us in session. 
Okay. So the fact that Mr. Vanish left is not a huge issue. No. No, it actually helps yeah. the case. No. Yes, it helps our case. I, I think, brief explanation, I was moving meetings and I thought I posted it and I didn't. And we met yesterday and so it's my screw up totally. But I've talked to all the committee members, they're okay. And so uh, we'll go ahead and move we'll me out. Right. As an individual, yeah, or no, so you, you have questions. So when, when the time comes, we will be able to have a productive discussion. It just will not be with the entire advisory committee. Right. And no decisions can be made. Yes. <laughs> well, no decisions for them. Can right. Be made. For them. Yes. <laughs> but for you, yes. All right. But but first, agenda item number four: special municipal employees. And so, uh, we in at a past meeting, we made a, uh, the board voted to um, name employee. Uh, name employees, special municipal employees. And the matter in front of us is to um, refine that and to specifically name which employees are designated as special municipal employees. Okay, so, so I, have a, I, have a, I have a problem with the way this has all been phrased. So okay. I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna just tell you straight up. So the motion was we would come back to enumerate the positions unless exempted by law, okay? We have a list of names in front of us, okay? We never should have collected a list of names. What we need is to define which positions are the special positions that allow for multiple appointments. It's that simple. I okay. don't understand why we scrambled to get a list of employees when Tomorrow, Matthew Graves could say, I don't want to be a volunteer fire or EMT Correct. person yes. again. We could put somebody else on who's a volunteer fire EMT person, and then that person wouldn't be covered by this vote today. Right. So or if they were to go into a role. That is exactly that is, law, right. right? Exactly. <laughs> so what we need mm -hmm. is the positions. So... Um, I know we said in the not too distant future. <laughs> I guess our wheels turn slow, <laughs> but that's okay, right? Is there any reason why this is a, it says Kelly requested the names to be listed, but that's, that's not actually what we voted. Okay, all right, that's fine. Do, can you tell just by looking at these to read off the positions or should we come back with them? I think we need to come back with them okay. and we have to double check yeah. that okay. they're not excluded positions. Yeah. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. We need to. Because yeah. if we, we could vote this and we could accidentally vote in opposition to um, one of the provisions that does is exempted by law. So I, I think we need to understand what those exemptions are. So I would, I'd make a motion that we pass this over for tonight and revisit it once we've sorted that out or have a town administrator that can sort it out for us. Second. All right, all in favor of passing this matter over and revisiting it at a future date, please say aye. 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 All right, and uh, since we are not yet at seven o'clock, can I get a motion to take the agenda out of order? Make a motion to take the agenda out of order and Second. finish the rest of our business. Second. All right. All in favor of taking the agenda out of order, please say aye. 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 All right. We're going to skip number five. We're going to go to number six. Carry over time, vacation time from Mike Duval. And Mike and, uh, let's see, we've got so Mike Duval in the highway department. They have been short-staffed for a good chunk of the fiscal year. So I'm... Although I, his math is entertaining because he says he has just over three weeks when he has nearly four. So... Okay. <laughs> That's so much. <laughs> I, I didn't even look that closely. It's like... <laughs> And wow, I just, I am so yeah. glad that this is on camera because it saved me from saying some of the things that <laughs> pop into my head. So. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, so I will, uh, I will take, I will uh, take so, a motion for, to uh, allow that carryover. I, I'll, I'll, I'm going to make a motion to allow the carryover 
but I do want to have some discussion before we vote. Mm -hmm. uh, second. Okay. Uh, discussion. So historically speaking, what we have started to do with people is tell them, like, how much time does he have with the town? Do you know? Duval? Oh, yeah. gosh. Many. So, like, how many, how much, how much vacation? No. no, Mike doesn't have that no. long. Oh, how long has he been here? Under no. 10, I think. Yeah. So, I don't know how much vacation time he gets, but one of the things, one of the things that we put into place previously was that they couldn't. It was a cap on the roll, on roll? Well, it wasn't really a cap on rollover. It was a we'd allow the rollover, but give them a target of what the max rollover they would be allowed the following year. Yes, a, a, a burn down. Yeah. Chart. So, yeah. like, I, like, um, so I made the motion to approve it. I'd like to make a, I'd like to make an amendment that we approve it with the understanding that he won't be allowed to carry over more than a hundred and, uh, let's see here, hundred and forty at forty hours next year. So he has to use all of his vacation plus thirteen hours of what he's carrying over in this next coming year. Okay, that's, Brad, that's a motion to amend the motion? Uh, second. Okay. Well, um, do you now, want to discuss it? Yeah, discuss. Yes. So, so discussion of the motion to, 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 to amend the motion to put the, um, the cap as to how much he needs to, uh, the maximum that we will entertain. Not, not this year, but for next year. Yes, for next year. Yes. I would just be cautious of the rules with rollovers and stuff like that and talk with either HR or the treasurer. I mean, we don't have HR. In, but we're not obligated right. to rollover. Okay. We have nothing in our, so we have nothing in our bylaws yeah. and we have nothing in our employee handbook that yeah. says that we're going to allow rollover. Yeah. No, I'm, okay. I'm totally good for now, rolling over. Yes. I'm just concerned. Well, now, historic and, and historically, we just rolled over yeah. everything without any end, without anything. And yeah. a couple of years ago, we started saying you can roll over but yeah. next year we'll only entertain a rollover of Right, so and given the circumstances, this makes sense. I just want to make sure we don't run into it like, hey, he was allowed to do it a couple well, years well, there's, ago. Well, there's, pre there's precedent right. that we started like giving, we, we started giving a, hey, we're going to let you roll what you have this year. Yeah. But there's a cap to what you can do next year. Make sure you burn it down. Right, right. We did it with Don. We did it with Donny Hebert okay. before he retired because okay. we knew he was retiring and started rolling a whole crap load of vacation over. And it's like, yeah. wait, we know you're going to be taking it at the end. You need to start taking some of it now. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, it is consistent with what we've done in okay. the past. Right. It right. was a little bit of a shift. And because we're not, and, and that's why I did like some quick math in my head and, mm -hmm. and 130 is basically, he gets to roll over like a little bit more than 80%. It's like 85% of what he has now. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're saying, oh, you have to take like all your, you know, all of your rolled over vacation. You just have to use all of your current, you'll have to use all of your next year's vacation and burn down like, mm -hmm. you know, two days. And hopefully we have more people first. working yeah. there right. shortly that he yeah. can take time off. Yeah. Well, I would tend to, to ask him to instruct him to burn it down faster. I would tell him. Well, but he's got to, he's going to have his next year vacation too. So the problem, no. the, the, that, so then it's a case of like, how much vacation do you really want your highway person to take? Yeah, but my, th my thought is that at least saying it's like burn down the balance of a week. If he's at 153, he has... Almost four weeks. He, he, he has 19, effectively 19 days of vacation. Yep. And saying, okay, well, then for next year, 15. Mm -hmm. And even then, it's going to take four years for him to, to uh, if, we did, if we then did it one week a year, from 120 it would be 80 and then 40, and then he'd be done rolling it over. Which yeah. to me is, that to me is long, takes longer to burn it down than I would prefer. It just it just seems like just saying get down to 140. It's we're not we're just going to be. He's going to be in position to roll it all over next year. Saying yeah, I burned it down to 140 like as you said. As long as he's not trying to bring us 180 next year, I really am not all that upset about it. Mm -hmm. But well, I mean, well, to, to my mind, but if he's, 
I think that's, I, I don't like the precedent we're setting of letting him carry such a big balance so far into the future. To my mind, I would, I would rather see, I'd rather clear, if you will, clear this off the books <coughs> sooner. And, so, and my thought is telling, is saying, we're gonna chop it down by a week every year is not an unreasonable ask. So what's basically, so, so what's assuming so you're, you get, so you're, so you're thinking 113? I'm, I'm saying, I, I would make it easy and say, bring it to 120, and then after that we do 40 hour chunks. Because the thought is, I don't know how much vacation he gets. Let's say he got four weeks of vacation this year. It's like he's carrying over almost four weeks. Mm -hmm. So he's going to go in the next seven. We're expecting him to then use five weeks of vacation, mm -hmm. and then he come and then he'll come up come come out with he'll have have to be carrying three weeks over next year. If yeah. or, and if he burns it faster, that's great. But we're telling him you need to take all of your 2025 vacation and burn through okay. a you week of that back. The difference between 130 and 120, I'm not going to fight over. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, can I, can I revise my yeah. motion, or yeah. I'll make an amendment to my motion? <coughs> amendment to the amendment. I don't, I don't think amendment. you make an amendment to amendment. Can, mm -hmm. can we just, can we just deny the motion and then you make another one? Yeah. Okay. One? Let's, let's, let's. Okay. Okay. All in favor of Beth's motion to, um, to add the requirement that he uh, burn down the vacation to uh, 140 hours by the end of next year, please say aye. All opposed, say no. 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 Beth, would you like to make another amendment? Yeah, let's. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to uh, uh, make a motion that we uh, amend that to putting a 120-day limit on his rollover next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. All right. Second. Second. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, and I think we've discussed this to death. So uh, Sorry. all, all <clears throat> in favor. Right. Um, you said 120 days. 120. Thank you. 120 yes. hours. May, may, the, may the record uh, indicate 120 the hours is the intention of the board. Yes. Is that uh, is that so? All all in favor of uh, the amendment to a, uh, a put a put a limit of 120 hours on the uh, rollover next year. Please say aye. 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 All right. At Karen, please make sure that the minutes reflect our, our intention our intention of walking down that over in following years. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's like analysis. So well, now, so, so now we have a, so like, we yeah. now have an amended motion to allow the carryover with the stipulation of a of a maximum amount that we will entertain carrying over next year. Yep. Um, which is 120 hours. Hours. Yes. All right. Uh, is there any further discussion on the matter? No. Yeah. All right. Um, all in favor of the motion to allow carryover with the uh, with the limit of how much will be carried over next year? Please say aye. 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 Thank you. And we are now primed for the next discussion with Lindsay's carryover. So this Lindsay, She's easier. <laughs> Lindsay's at 62 hours. Right. Which is... Basically two weeks. Yes. And so I would say, using, using Mike's, um, using the, our previous discussion as a template, uh -huh. um, we would probably just... Um, want to figure out what we want to, uh, the target we want for next year. And I'm thinking 28 hours, it's a little, it's a little more than a week for her to burn down, but it gets her to one, gets her down to one week next year. Mm, I think it's too aggressive though for. Okay. That's, I'm, I'm so okay we, we're that. only burning down a week of somebody that's got four. Mm -hmm. If we've got somebody that's got two, it should be probably three or four days mm -hmm. worth. Of hours, so I would put the max at what, 62 minus 24. Well, I would say she has less vacation, so she needs less time to burn it down. I wouldn't say there. Well, it's it's an. <clears throat> I'm just trying to keep the ratio consistent in terms of weeks of work. Mm -hmm. So 40 hours is a week of work for him, 28 hours is a week of work for her. Mm -hmm. So I think telling her to take a week less, like have a week less by the time she gets through the end of the year makes sense. Well, she has 63 hours, which she is... She has 62 hours. Six if you subtract 28 hours from that, mm -hmm. it's... Yeah. That's, that's, for her, that's two weeks and, and six hours. That's, that's three eight hour days my understanding right. is she works three eight hour days plus four hours okay so 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 it's 
it's basically, like you said, two weeks for her. Mm -hmm. right, we ask him to do one fourth of his. So one fourth of hers would be. Gosh, I wish my brain actually still worked these days. 16 is yeah, the closest 15 number. And a half. 15 or 16. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess, I guess that's, that's the different approach I'm taking. You're thinking to give them both the same amount of time to burn it down. And my approach is they should be burning it down at about a week per year. And therefore, since she has less carryover, she should burn, she should burn it down faster. Or she should burn it down in fewer years. I think then you're treating the employees differently. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I don't I don't think I but I don't think it's onerous to say every year you get you, you have to work through one week of your backlog every year. She has less to carry over. Is she's getting treated differently because she has a she has a different carryover amount, not because I'm applying a consistent I I feel the the expectation is consistent that you reduce your backlog by about a week every year. I see your point that you could also say we expect you to burn through your we expect you to, to work through your backlog within X number of years. I think both are both are valid frameworks. I think you're just you're just thinking give them the same amount of time so, that I'm saying yeah, give them the well, same rate. And, and so yeah, and, and so my issue with it is once upon a time, not that long ago, because we really only started putting these restrictions in place a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. people could roll over months of vacation yeah, for years. Practice. Right? It's a horrible practice. Mm -hmm. Right. But I don't think I, I think we can like peel that back slowly because a lot of a lot of the folks who have this vacation to Brad's point right it's not that they don't want to take their vacation it's that when you're on a really short staff department right you have a tendency not to take the time off if you feel obligated to get the work done mm -hmm. I don't want to put Lindsay in a position just because she works fewer hours a week to have to take a greater percentage of her overall work hours off in a period of time when they're understaffed, transitioning superintendents, and I could do, she's covering for other departments right now. I don't think it's sensible of us to force her to take that extra vacation. But if they're both, but if the general rule is they're both expected to work work down their their backlog by a week every year then everyone's work, working through the same percentage of their work hours they're, they're no they're not because she hasn't accumulated as much so but, but, but she's, she's still got to take all of her vacation from this year coming plus yes. take a couple at least a couple of extra days mm -hmm. right but but that means that but effectively if you work 52 weeks a year and you are expected to reduce your vacation backlog by a week a year, then you have, everyone is going to have one extra, take one extra week of vacation. And that's the same whether they work 40 I think we're actually hurting, minutes. potentially hurting the town as well. At the end of the day, it doesn't hurt the person to tell them to go take the vacation because they're getting paid. Mm -hmm. So... I don't think it's really smart at this point to give that direction personally. Mm -hmm. It's only a couple days difference, hypothetically. She only works four days a week, so we're right now we're fighting over 12 hours of, of work. But I, I still think percentage-wise, I think we need to drive it by a percentage-wise instead of by a arbitrary week, depending mm -hmm. on and how so, much time they're doing. I mean, it's not a hill I'm worth dying on. <laughs> So. It's like I've, 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 I've fought enough and it's like, or fought is the strong word. I have discussed my point and, with as much as I, as I think is necessary and that y your, your proposal is valid, it makes sense, it's not the way I would approach it, but 
it's not that important. It's important that we well, supplement I, it and we move it down. So I think the reality is, is once we have enough people down there, I'm sure she's going to take off some time. <laughs> right. Or somebody fill, filling the grant writer role or right. any of the other things yeah. that she's helping us with right mm -hmm. now. So uh, I don't want to put her in a position where it's like she has to basically flip us the bird and take some vacation time because we needed her help. Right. <laughs> you know? Because that's what that's the position we're putting ourselves so, in by telling her to take the extra week. So effectively, we are setting the expectation I, I, in general that if there's carryover, we're going to be off that 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 she can't carry over more than forty six next year. Right. But that in general, we're 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 going to be looking to offer people four years to work through their their backlog. Yeah. No matter. It's like my thought is if someone's looking to carry over a couple of days, we might not be consistent with that. If someone wants to carry over three days because they didn't get off their vacation, I, first, I, but I we'll think. Deal with that I think. I days. think. Yes, I think you could deal with hypotheticals all day long. But right now, mm -hmm. I'm mostly concerned with never again having to approve 240 days of carryover, which I have seen at one point mm -hmm. with the town. Yes. So I think we are all in an, in agreement for 240 the, hours, or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> we actually had somebody. It was close to six months of vacation at one point. <laughs> I think that's what I'd like one week. So I think, I think I started the discussion without the motion, so. So, okay, I, so, so I'll make a motion that we approve her carryover with a, 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 some wording that she not exceed 46 hours next of carryover next year. Second. Thank you. Um, and that's 16 hours, that's a 16 hour reduction? If my math is good. 46, 62. 62 yes. minus. 16, I believe, is is 46. Six. In my head. All right, yeah. I'm good. Any further discussion? All in favor of uh, the motion for Lindsay's carryover, please say aye. 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 And we are now at 708. We have uh, gone further than that. All right. So. Um, and the last thing we have is the request to deficit spend snow and ice. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, let, let's bang that out and then we'll jump to advisory. Okay. Because I think Civic Plus. I'll make a motion to approve the deficit spending of. Um, Snow and ice of uh, $9,947.70 for wages and $2,388.91 for expenses. Second. All right, and thank you. And Beth, to clarify, those are the remaining balances in the account. They are not yet oh. at deficit spending. Okay. That they are, they need, they, my understanding is they need, they need authorization to deficit spend before the accounts go into deficit. Ah. And that therefore we are still positive balance, but just in case there's a freak snowstorm, they don't want to be caught short. Got it. All right. Well, and so, yeah, we're and just so allowing for, them. For the oh, we're allowing them. them. Okay. Yeah. I thought they needed that amount. No, because an expense account, you cannot deficit spend without. It's like they need our authorization to deficit spend the expense account. They could deficit spend the wages account because mm -hmm. MGL allows that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor of authorizing the highway department to deficit spend the snow and ice accounts, if needed, please say aye. 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 There we go. And now the budget. State, does our copier put the stapler here? Or is that you? The electric stapler does. Okay. I put the stapler down. The electric one doesn't do a corner because you can't stick a corner in there. So if you don't like it over there, I'm, a, I'm not a fan. I can, I can, it's okay. I can manually staple papers. Staple papers. Yeah. All right. We double it. Double it. So basically, we give her 6%. We don't want to and uh, uh, yeah. all right. And and for the audience at home, I think we mentioned it before, but the uh, the advisory committee is uh, not in session because they uh, they are not in a posted meeting. So we're meeting with a non quorum amount of members um, for a discussion with them. Um, but it will be a productive discussion. So um, hi Jeff, hi Sarah. Hi. Um, uh, for priority, I would like us to do the warrant articles first because the warrant book and the article language will need to go to the lawyer for review. And I think the budget is less likely to need the, the lawyers to look it over. I think just the accountant looking it over will be sufficient. And that's more for in her wheelhouse anyway. And so just if we run up against time, which I hope we don't get cut short, but I want to do what needs to get done first first. So um, 
the select board has already reviewed the, uh, the money articles for the warrant, and um, we, we, we have made our initial recommendations, and does the, has the advisory come up with any, um, recommend, uh, have you made your recommendations on the articles? Yes. Okay, well, and so, so if so. When you started. Are you, we, we, we have had an initial discussion, we got all this information late, we were working on the budget, mm -hmm. we went over the line item, mm -hmm. Excel spreadsheet, um, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we were basically in agreement with what Beth had recommended at the last select meeting that had been voted on by the select people as far as um, how to get under the, how to get all the, the articles into the free cash that was available. Um, since that discussion, we have not taken a vote, but I believe that uh, we would have uh, a negative uh, not go along with the purchase by whatever method of the backhoe. Everything else, I believe we would vote yes. So that's the only item that, that we had any particular uh, issue. Okay, so you all are advising against the backhoe? Right. As far as the, we haven't taken the official vote, I'm saying for the, I, I've taken an unofficial vote. Okay. It's probably going to be three two. So that's okay. no. All right. Well, I mean that's their purview. They don't have to. They're advising and they're advising no on the backhoe. Yep. And that's. We had a further. Um, Just for curiosity's further, sake, what's the what's the reason for it? Two things. For, further, um, Bob Barnes was very was expressly against using debt to purchase the backhoe. Then he said that um, they could still work whatever the, the machine that they have down there now, that people, they could still use it because it was simple enough for the people that were there to be able to work it. Otherwise, it goes back to the, the dealer and he charges an arm and leg. So Bob, again, is always for you know, saving money. So he felt that we could still use what we had, plus the mileage on the, on the whatever we have is fairly low. I think it's still within the range of what um, is acceptable. So, given all the other items that were there, we said, or, or they. I believe there's some structural issues with the machine. Now, I'm iffy on my vote. So my vote depends on a couple of things. So, I'm going to get with Gary and meet with him one on one to talk about tobacco to get more information to decide mm -hmm. my for sure. Vote. I mean, they've been patching it. All along. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I saw I saw it while they still had it ripped apart when they were rebuilding it over this last winter. Yeah, I, mean, I know I'm not down there a lot, but yeah, and I'm very familiar with the maintenance that one does on those things, and you can only rip those hydraulics apart and so put it back times. together so yeah. many times right. before you wind up dumping more money into it than what it's worth, quite frankly. Right. So, and that one's already pretty much. So, if you were doing them, if you were a private corporation and you were doing the decision making on the, the, the fix or replace, you would replace on that one. Um, and I don't think, I don't know if Bobby understood that we're act. And I know that there are people that objected to using Chapter 90 for um, purchasing equipment. I think our intent was to go ahead and lease using Chapter 90 since it's not enough money to actually do any real paving. He, he was the most eloquent that I've heard him in six years uh, in his denial of using that. So, yeah. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. But so. Uh, again, that, that's- What sort of, are you saying? Don't use chapter 90 and uh, borrow for it? Don't, don't use- just, Don't use either. Yeah. Oh. He, he, yeah. Doesn't, he doesn't want to borrow. No, he doesn't want to borrow and he doesn't want to use, use chapter, chapter 90. 90. So. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's, it's a tough call. I mean, if we actually come down with the vote with this further information, it might go the other way. But right now, we're at 3 2. So. Uh, Jeff, I have a question. I'm, I'm looking at the numbers, and to, to square the circle, um, it, uh, the select board decided to, um, to look at um, taking the backhoe out of, um, off of free cash and either Chapter 90 or debt. Um, we just took the fuel system off the table. Yeah. And we 
I propose moving $75,000 from capital stabilization to the roof stabilization. So that basically removed all three from the, from the drain. And then, so that gives us, and that left us at third, that, by my numbers here, that leaves us at 37,900 and change. Now, is this your spreadsheet or am I not looking at the right thing? Um, I added these columns for my oh, analysis. Okay. I, 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 I added them <laughs> in. So it's like, and so, but if we did, if we put the $40,000 for that highway wants for the new fuel dispensing system in back in, that would more than exceed our, our free cash. And so what did you have in mind since you said you thought to leave that in? What, uh, what other changes were you making to the warrant well, articles we, in order we, to keep we, us under? Um, we were concerned about the, the tree warden, tree. the fifty-five or the tree fifty-five thousand. We already had forty thousand from last year that hasn't been used, mm -hmm. and um, we had some question. I'm not sure if it was a question or an issue on the um, the Green Street thing. Why we needed the extra fifty-four, but um, those we just we didn't have enough information to okay. be able to say one way or the other. Um, the the Green the Green Street is because we. We need the money to finish the project. The project, the project is in progress, and my understanding. And what did we use to fund that? Was that a grant? Yeah, the grant. No, so I think, yes, yeah. yeah, so I think the question was just why was the why was the difference between the grant and what we need so much? Like, wh why was the grant short so much? Um, I think that was the only question that I think I I believe because the cost of everything has gone way right. the heck up. That's, 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 that's my assumption. When the grant, when the grant was authorized, authorized yeah. and then when we got around to doing the project, the cost of things in that interval was um, resulted in the construction costs being higher than expected. Okay. And so, in order to get it done, we have to we have to put up more money to get the project done. Okay. And so, the grant, the grant money does not cover as big a part of the project as we want. We have to put some more of our money in. Okay. And so that that is that is why that's there. My understanding of the trees is that the uh, the tree money was being expended. I would say slowly at first. We had uh, Dennis in, um, I think at the beginning near the beginning of the year, to uh, ask him about this. And the uh, the explanation he gave was that um, after we authorized the money, it was a little slow getting onto Rusty's schedule. But it, what he said was that um, was that we should expect to see that. We should have expected to see that pick up over the winter. Um, and doing the warrants, I see it all the time right now. Yeah, where do you know where we are I don't on that know account? The, no. All right, I will. I may be able to find What's it. What's that? But every the, warrant I've been signing. The um, invoices um, what is the status of the of the warrant article account for tree work? Oh, good. So he is expending his. Oh account. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I think okay. I think it, it, I'll be honest. When I looked at it first, I was concerned that we had allocated this money and no one was doing anything with it. Yeah. And, and Dennis said that, no, we've been getting started and he was expecting it to accelerate just based on our ability to get the vendor in to do the work. Okay. And so therefore, it's like, and... But, I just wanted to make sure it, that he no, but it's a, a fair, plan, yeah, it's a fair question. Money, if, we're, yeah. if, we're, if we're not spending the money, why put more money in the account? Yeah, yeah. It's like, like it's just a fair question. Yeah, he had a good amount. I thought he had like 20 grand or something. So yeah, like, yeah, and the amount of trees... And I think he marked like a hundred and over a hundred yeah, trees. There's he has more than enough trees yeah. on the list to spend the list. every penny we have in that zone. Okay, tree warden expense, is this right? So is oh no, I can't see what's in the... More um, trees or the same amount of trees? This, this, or this, this, gone up or? Um, I think it's more money because the money that's, that we allocated the last time we put money in the tree warden in the uh, for taking care of trees is not enough to take care of all the trees that we have. And I think we always knew that there was not enough money to take care of the problem, but it was a, we have a problem, we need to put some money in this so we can start, so that we are taking down more trees than die. And I suspect in the next three or four weeks, you're gonna be able to pick out which trees are dead because they're gonna be the ones that don't have the leaves popping. I mean, the regular tree warden expense only has $1,200 in it, but he, he's using money that was already set aside, and I don't know if that's in this expenditure. Yeah, I think it was. So the like annual the town year? meeting, yeah. The, last year, right? The, yeah, the 4-4 the right. report, there was, he had only spent 14-4 um, of the Fifty-four thousand dollars. Right. That that's, was in, that's what we were looking right? at. For the, just yeah. Right. Right. But, but it's it's tree cutting season. So yes, between yeah, now yeah, and yeah. town meeting, they're yeah. they're yeah. likely to spend most of that forty grand. And yeah. like a, he, they've spent a lot because I've been 
Right. It, it just hasn't. Arms. It just hasn't been invoiced yet. I mean, it's no, a lot of them have out. been invoiced. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So say, if, yeah, if he's seeing it on the warrant, it's been invoiced. Yeah. But but, I mean, it, but it's not from this tree account. It's from the money that was. I don't know where. Oh no! Oh, you it, know it, what I'm saying? It's from the operating budget, probably. Right. Right. Yeah. So the, the so he spent a total so far this year, basically, if you include his operating budget, which they would spend first. Yeah. And the warrant. So they've spent twenty, what six thousand almost. Oh, okay, all right. So he has year to date. Yeah. And and we're going into the, the second the tree cutting season. Season, yeah. I was gonna say the weather hasn't been nice. And yeah. 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 So now, yeah, no, okay. Yeah, so he'll expend all of it. Okay. Yeah. The operating budget tree warden expense account has twelve hundred sixty dollars in it. Yeah. So it is ninety okay. percent expended. So given that, I would say the the remaining trees being it. So he yeah. has been removing trees. Yeah. And he might, he I, might and not get all the way through forty thousand, but I'd put money that he'll have between gonna twenty get really and thirty. Close. <laughs> yeah. It'll be between twenty and thirty. Okay. It'll be okay. done yeah. before the. the yeah. That's why I talk. I mean, as I said, we, we're we're in agreement with mm -hmm. the one. Mm -hmm. We're we're sticking our sword, or the committee is on that on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the, the back over. That's the old, we, we can let the town the, decide. I mean, yeah. that, that's one of yeah. those ones where we can recommend it and you can recommend against it and we let the town decide because we and we always no, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's fine. I think this year we'll get our little things in bold in the, in yeah. the warrant rather yep. than last year. So yeah. if someone asks a question, we'll let Bob, you know. Speak. Talk to it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did, can you remind me, did we, did we, the thermal imaging device, did we recommend that or did, for that or against that? I thought we recommended for everything that was placed. Okay, everything but, yeah, uh, just, okay. We recommended pulling off the three items we needed to pull off to actually, um, well, not so much pull off as shift it from coming from free cash. And I can send you all a sheet. I fixed the formulas on that when I was doing it, okay. when, when we did pull the it, math. Pull it off. You pull, pull it out of the free cash bucket and put it in a different bucket. I don't know if that's working when I, I, I fixed I the formulas. Okay. So, Jeff? No, you got to fix that, the... One second. Um, column pause. Oh no, actually, when it says value, so, that's so, not. So I must have done it on my own copy, right. not, not yep. shared it back. So I'll share it back to y'all. So are you all working on the same budget spreadsheet that Kelly originally made? Um, them? No. I am. I'm working off Kelly's the one that the one that's in our share folder. I'm working okay. on the one that Karen sent me earlier Which gets today. Shared yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, but I did. I asked. I asked Karen to send them copies of what we have. They don't have access to the online copies, the Fred, but yeah. they do Are have access. Are you sure that sounded like Karen this sent one? them the act? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, as long as we're looking right, at the so, same one. No, what happens so, is, yeah, I said so they Jeff, didn't send it to them. I didn't, they can't. Coming back to the question, if in your calculations, by taking backhoe out of free cash yeah. and taking roof stabilization out of free cash, yeah. that still, if you leave the fuel system in at $40,000, that still leaves us with free cash overcommitted by about $2,000. We, we hadn't even considered the fuel since we took it yeah. off of the so, warrants. Yeah, we never we considered We can't fuel. recommend if it's not on the warrants. Okay. All right, so, so, we, so would like, we would like the fuel system in there if possible, but since it was taken out of the warrants, we didn't consider it. Okay, that, okay, that's, no okay that's, that's the part I was missing. Thank you. Yes. Um, I do know that... I um, would be happy to, to vote it in if you decide to file some other $2,000 somewhere and say, hey, let's do it. Yeah. Um, let's see. I do know that um, in I received an email from Gary. I think the other members on the board were... Uh, well, if you're looking uh, for 2000 I mean, two thousand dollars we have. I thought it was all quite well, a bit more than that. So one of the questions I had in here was the survey and permanent marking, and we'd have to talk to Don. Um, Don survey and permanent marking six hundred one high water mark on state-owned dam. Didn't Don send an email that he was getting that? I gotta look at that email. He sent an email. But I thought someone was doing it at no cost. But maybe I read that wrong. Huh. Is, is that help you talk with anything? No, 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 that, 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 explain, that explains why. Since, since you, you just said it's off the project and so you weren't counting it against free cash. Yes. Oh, I know. That's why. And so, and I'm saying it's like, and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to, I wanted the board to talk about um, whether we want to reconsider that, um, just given what I recall Gary's um, 
sharing with us his perception of the urgency the yeah. 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 is that he thought he that. thought it was important I, I was and I'll be honest I, it's like what he said was like okay I can understand why they're asking for that yes. and it's much less of the nice to have than I was originally thinking it was oh. Well, I, I sort of changed my mind when I saw someone find me on Lindsay's uh, yeah, information yeah. email. Right, that way they have it. And, yeah, um, so there will be no cost. It, it, Am I reading that right? No, you're reading correct. Mm -hmm. I'm reading something later. I remember you said before it was more nice to have, but based on everything he, he listed there, I thought that, that I was able to you know, uh, process that well, and I, I thought yeah. that was a good, good expenditure. Yeah. Brad, what? So this email here that Don sent? Yeah. Uh, this will be done at no cost to the town of Brookfield. For the, the survey. The, the surveying and the signs? Oh, I don't know about Because there's surveying and there's permanent marking. Hmm. And so if you found someone to do the surveying, it's like, great. Do you want me to try to call them? Really? Yeah, check with them. Because is that send the text? I mean, my thought is, if we really wanted to make this happen, we could probably find some money in the budget, to, in, in the, in the uh, free cash allocations to make this work. I mean, if nothing else, just shifting a little bit of money out of the tree work and over to, would, in my, in my current calculations, would give us enough free cash to then contemplate to, to allow us to bring the pumps back in. Yeah. It would leave us very little after that. We'd have very little margin yeah. in our, it's like, like very, very tight, but it's like, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Yeah, so if, if somebody wants them, okay, so let's do this. Don usually comes to these meetings. <laughs> uh, it went right to his voice. So. Okay, that's probably because he's got something to do. Okay, so I'm going to. I don't know if this is the shared one or not, but I'm gonna, I fixed it on one copy and then um, now it's not there anymore. So so you were saying even if you did you know, 50 rather than 55, that might be enough to swing it. Yeah, yeah, because it's like with, without the, without the my calculations show that without the fuel system, we would have uh, thirty-seven thousand nine hundred fifteen dollars of free cash unallocated that would just roll over to next year. So five thousand dollars would push that to forty-two and change, which would then give us enough to put the fuel system in and leave us with almost three thousand dollars of yeah. as very thin cushion. Yeah, thin, thin, thin. But that's so, all you really need. I mean, really the. I mean, usually you want to leave like five to fifteen, but yeah. it and, doesn't really matter. Yeah, and my, and my thinking is is that I think right now we more need to decide what's in the boat and what's out of the boat, and if we want to if we want to shift the numbers, the lawyers don't need to review us shifting the numbers. They just need to review the verbiage, and we plug no, they don't. Numbers. And that's why I'm always <laughs> always <laughs> always advocating yeah. for um, the generic <laughs> language <laughs> and all yeah. the money articles. Yeah, with yeah, with the money with the money in the description, not in the official article text itself. Correct. No, I, I I'm behind that. Okay, let me just. And then so, and what's the, what's the, well, it's going to, it's going to be three to the other way. So I get that we have $12,000 remaining well, in free cash. After, after, regardless, so, like, to, so to I just, after, after putting yeah, the, uh, so fuel, the fuel pumps back in, that's fine. <laughs> oh, no, fuel pumps back in would get us Okay, what's your starting number? 544, 490? Yeah, 544, 490. And yeah. library at 25,000, line painting at 10. Yeah. The backhoe was 179. Fuel but it's, but it's under borrow. Right. And then road construction, 25. Yeah. So he Gravel, actually emailed this. Oh. Gary emailed about the backhoe mm -hmm. to Marty. He didn't include the rest of your board. Oh. Should I? Over yeah, to them. send it to him. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, it was so, actually today it happened. So, uh, gravel for oh, private yeah. roads on 3000 yeah. Okay. okay. OPEB at 50000 um, Roof stabilization came out of free cash, but that was 75000 Green Street at 54000 Tree work is currently 55000 Thermal imaging, 11000 
protective clothing for the firefighters, 25,000. Air compressor, 82,000. Sir. Elevator, 76,000. Yeah. Fire alarm for town hall, 80,000. Um, skipping the key code entry system, flower bed, 575. Roller rink, 8,000. And survey markers, 2,000. Okay, so that leaves us 37,915. 37915 is my Actually, number, no. also. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right, so, so our numbers are in alignment. And so what I would what I would like to do, or what I'd like us to consider doing, is to reduce, for now we're re reducing tree work to $50,000. Let's, as a placeholder, put the fuel system back on and we ask uh, Gary and Pete to come in next week and talk to us about did this. You guys see, us did you guys see the email from today? No. Okay. I have, uh, uh, if, it, if it came in after 2 o'clock, I have It came in it. at 12.34. Okay. Well, did it go to me? No, it didn't actually. <laughs> well, then I guess that's why I didn't see it, Brad. <laughs> that's why you guys didn't see it. It only went to me and Marty for some reason. Did you get the letter I didn't send to you? Okay. Well, I know Brad, I didn't. Is it relative to the budget? Yeah. Okay, so would you mind sharing it yeah. with us? I just assumed but, it went to everyone. <laughs> But my, th but my thinking is that... Which Marty would, probably assumed it went to everyone. We can, thinking ahead, we can send the warrant to the lawyer for review with the fuel pump article in it. And if we decide we don't want to do it, we just pull it out. And if we decide to do it, it's in what's been reviewed by the lawyer. And, we're, and it, it gives us the flexibility to include it going forward with the option to pull it out if we, at a later date, decide, yeah, we don't want to do this. Just, just given... What Highway is saying is the, the urgency they share. I don't want to go actually, forward and lose about, the opportunity to put it back in. This is actually more about the fuel system. It's about the fuel system. Mm -hmm. well, that, that's what I discussed a few minutes ago. All right, and I am getting my. But in the email below, there's the information about the background. Yeah, the, the other question, if, if I may speak, the um, what what we had originally heard when we had the uh, presentation from Gary was that uh, he was going to ask for a net number, but then he asked. There's there's two articles. One is for the the trading value, and then there's the other one for the actual purchase price. So I was wondering why there wasn't just going for the net value rather than having to do the is it, you, you have to authorize the sale of, or the trade in to the to the dealer is that how it works I would say that author I would say separate articles make sense because you want to authorize the full purchase price because you don't know how much you're going to get on trade in unless you are positive and there's a solid market for trade in and very liquid and you know what you're going to get well, because otherwise if you if you ask for net and you don't get enough in trade in you don't have enough money to buy well, it, it's in the contract that said we'll give you the trade-in, we'll buy it from you for the twenty-four thousand, whatever it is. And yet that was, it was, it was just a question. So he already, he already has a contract offer that he can just execute on with. The well, was it was an invoice? Well, yeah, it? and you, and and so here's the thing: you can't, yeah, yeah, you can't guarantee what the what the net's going to be. So all of the articles would be not to exceed if they don't spend the full amount. So you you got a lot bigger problem. If you're ten thousand dollars short on like a purchase price for a piece of equipment, then if you're ten thousand dollars over, if you're ten thousand dollars over on an on a warrant article, all that happens is that when you sweep the accounts the next year, it comes back to you. Um, and actually, with the with the article accounts, you have to vote it back out again or vote it into another. You have to mm -hmm. vote it into yeah anything that was voted as a town meeting article. The only way you can get the residual out is to vote it 
out of that article. No. My understanding was that if the article had completed, if the purpose of the article had been completed, it could be automatically swept. Like if it's, a, if it's an article that purchased a piece of equipment, once equipment's bought, leftover money rolls I've, out. I've heard it both ways. Yeah. I mean, and I know we don't vote a lot of articles out of existence. We used to. Okay. We may have gotten out of that habit. I think Lori looked into the gas fee and it allows them the sweep if it's if it's truly residual, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, my, my question was just more from a technical purpose. You know, why were there two more articles? Well, there just one for the net, but that, that answers it. So it's, yeah, I mean, it, it just doesn't it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I have a lot of inquiring minds on the committee, so. Um, <laughs> it forward them to the YouTube video. <laughs> To the YouTube video, <laughs> or whatever it is. Oh yeah, <laughs> fair enough. No, it, it's just. I mean, it, I mean, I'm sure all of you have shared the same situation. I was like, if you don't have an answer to a question on something that's being, so that everyone gets a negative thing and say, well, let's try to yeah. chop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless I have the information in advance. Sometimes yeah. I do, sometimes I don't. I, I can't. Yeah. I can't nip it in the bud, so mm -hmm. to speak. Yeah. We're going to be lucky to get scrap metal raid on that pack. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> scrap metal ain't cheap. Well, I mean, and it's going to get more, with the tariffs going in, it's going to get more value. It's got to be worth something. Yeah. Maybe. maybe the engine's worth something. They are. If it's low mileage. <laughs> or lower mileage. Okay, does that help with the warrants? Uh, that does help with the warrants. I think that, um, so uh, for, for, the, for, the, for the board action, do we want to make the uh, make the changes that I uh, th that I suggested in order to uh, get the fuel system back on so especially in light of the uh, email we just uh, that Brad just shared saying that Gary felt that that was the uh, priority and yeah. then we, and then we talked and my thought is we can talk to him about it next week it, it sounds like they sure. think if they think we have a problem and it's worth 40 so and I guess the the challenge I have with it is I don't think our entire fuel budget in a year is 40,000. So, I mean, we can talk about department accountability all we want to. Right. <laughs> it is. But, but you're spending but 50, fifty-five thousand okay. dollars. is what We budget for oh, fuel. Okay. Every okay. Year. Well, it's gone. It's gone up then. But yeah. but I I guess my point is. Oh, I see your point. <laughs> <laughs> right. Even it, so so unless we think something like ten ten percent of our fuel is disappearing for for non town yeah. purposes. Yeah. Right. Which is, and, and if if we think we well, have if we get the cameras issue, going down there, we'll be able to see. You know, <laughs> it, it might be that, the, in that that the cameras would be adequate versus the the other. But I mean, that's that's my only point. No, so, I, I'm just, and, that, and that's why I suggested that we put it on for now, and then we bring Gary and Pete in next week yeah. to understand so, this in so more detail I, to make I, a final I decision. have no problem putting it on there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even have a problem if we have to get it to press sooner rather than later, recommending it, and then potentially just be warned that I may speak against it. I'll warn you, unlike mm -hmm. other historic select board members, that I, I may wind up voting for it tonight and speaking against it on the town hall floor. Well, my, my expectation, my hope is that we would have that all settled out ahead of the printing of the warrant book. Yeah. And that, uh, but if new information comes after the warrant's printed, you do what you but need if, to do. Better. But but if but if we want to if we want to put it on there, but yeah, at fifty five thousand dollars worth of fuel a year at a, a forty thousand dollars system to keep track, of, it doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of uh, sense. Well, to yes, me. my my understanding <laughs> is that it's it's a complete <laughs> fuel at system. At least this year. Yeah, this year. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think my understanding. Well, we'll we'll let Gary and Pete talk to it. Yep. It's like absolutely. I, I think there is some value. Is there forty thousand dollars worth of value? I don't know. Is the, do they? Is it, it going to come in? Are they? Budgeting forty thousand dollars because they want to make sure they have enough, or is it budgeting forty thousand dollars because it's a thirty-eight thousand dollars project and they need and they're asking for as little extra as possible? Yeah. All things they can tell us in a week. Yep. Okay. All right. So I'll take a motion. Uh, I, I'll I'll take I'll take a motion to um, restore the uh, highway's request for a fuel system to the warrant and to adjust the tree work um, warrant article to uh, a fifty thousand dollars free cash ask. In order, um, you have that motion. Second. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion, or have we beat this one to death? All right. Seeing as there's no further discussion, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Thank that you. looks like a scene from The Walking Dead after that discussion. Mm. So. <laughs>
Right. So Karen, you're going to have to find the text of that article from an earlier version and put it back yeah, in. Yeah, I'll put it back in, yeah. Thank you. And other than that, I think that I think that the the gaps between advisory and the select board are known, they're respected, and I don't know that we need any further information. I don't think we need any further discussion on this, Jeff. On the warrants? On the warrants? Okay, excellent. All right, so that means that uh, we, so logically, the warrant needs to go to the lawyer. The sooner the better. Do we need to, Beth, you have more experience with this than me, so I will um, ask for your thoughts on the matter. Do we need to, what do we need to do? do are we ready to send it to the lawyers? Or do we need to review this any further? Let's just do one quick run through on the warrant. Okay. Before we send it over to them. So. All right. Can I? So. May, may I? May I ask? It, it's like, if it's if we're not going to be looking at the money articles, can we shift to the budget first and come back to this just so that we're not doing it when Jeff and Sarah are sitting around? Absolutely. In fact, what I can do is, if you don't mind me multitasking a little, I will read through it while we're doing budget stuff and pop my head up like a gopher when it's something I care about and uh, then I'm um, good with that I'm well, I, I was going to say I've been, I've been I, 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 I have been steeping Growth myself in, in the operating budget and so yeah. all right so um, I'm thinking that the best way to approach this is um, on an exception basis and just we say because I know that Sarah, you shared your numbers with me. Yes. I put them in my spreadsheet. Um, yes. I will say that the select board, the select board has not made its recommendations yet. So uh, Beth, can I get your attention for a moment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that um, what I have done is we have the requested amounts. Um, the departments have requested salary increases. Um, all over the board. All over the board. And what I have done is I have prepared a set of numbers with a 4% Cola for all the departments. Really? Yes. And we can do that? Um, we, we can recommend that, yes. No, but I'm saying it works at 4%? Um, well, we can, well, we'll, we'll need to talk about it. Oh. But it's like, but my thought is for the discussion. We need to look at the math, but. Yes, right. But I, I, Probably I, I, yeah, does. But, but really? it does, it, does it, I, I, it works in my math, and okay. it works in reality. And so actually, we should talk about that first. But the intention is to use that as the starting point for our discussion. And then, from there, discuss variances with them. But I want it. But I want to make sure that because we, the board, has to, has stated a target of four percent, and so that's why I picked four percent to go with because that was our stated target. Um, I will need to scrub the numbers again, so I may reserve. Like next week, we may come back and say, yeah, we got to revisit a couple numbers um, due to math errors or I missed something. But I think we're going to be pretty close on most of them. And from there, we can. Uh, um, the advisory has re is recommending a 3.2 percent cola, and so we, there will be a gap between our recommended numbers due to that. But if that's the only gap we have, then we're pretty close to being in alignment. And I think we're, we're in aligned in spirit, if not in magnitude. Okay, so they're saying 3.5, and we're saying four. They're saying 3.2. 3.2. We're okay. saying cola, which again, I think it was 3.24, but we said 3.2. Right. And then you guys. Uh, and we're going. And we were going for because of the fact that the year that cola was eight point nine percent, we we did so we did like three and a half. So this starts to catch them up. Yeah. Well. This is that that was our rationale. So so again, if I might, can I make one small editorial comment just for the other two or no? Yeah. Or I? Uh, go, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, Jeff. You want to set the stage before we dig into the big picture? Go ahead. Yes. So the reason why we're a little bit uh, very clamped or whatever the word is is because the two years running and the town, the previous town, whatever, Kelly, did not disregarded direct instructions for the department heads not to put in their percentage increases, just put it down at the bottom with whatever it is. If it's six or seven percent, fine, but don't mess with the numbers. So each department came in with a different set of numbers. She said basically just put in whatever you think you should get. So I don't, I don't disagree with that, but from a logistics, Excel, whatever finance standpoint, it makes everything crazy. So 
what's happened, and then she locked the spreadsheet, only gave us one column. So what we've had to do since her departure is for Sarah to recreate Kelly's template, taking the 24 numbers, all of the department worksheets that we have, and then taking out whatever was put in, and then putting in our 3.2%. And that's what I talked to you about two weeks ago and said this is going to be whatever. Yeah. And then between the two of you, Tom decided to go ahead and do it. Yeah. We were trying to reconcile everything. There's been a lot of um, formulaic goofs and other things, which we've caught some of them, we've caught most of them, I hope. So we shouldn't be that far off. I think we might be forty or $50,000 off from what you with your 4% and us with our 3.2. And the only major debate or whatever was, you know, where is the levy limit? We basically got that number from Lori after we asked Lori for a revision of what Kelly had given us. And basically, uh, we, we decided that legal services or legal fees should be held constant. Uh, if there were any overages, we had the reserve fund next year, but we were so close to the levy limit, we're within less than 100,000, could be even 30 or 20, we don't know exactly yet. So that's why we made that one change to what the department's, or we recommended that one change to the department's budgets aside from the COLA. That basically was, was the only thing that we're, I think, in, in difference with that. Okay, so it was basically the legal fees and, and the COLA. But, right, but and there's a couple of other ones that, that, that I mentioned to, yeah. to Tom in passing, but again, we're, we're, we're still not confident enough about all our formulas and everything else to say that there might not be some other issue, but I think we're, we're pretty close. One thing we do need to check is the highway supers pay, because I think that the original budget was going to be a little lower than what we voted. Correct. Yeah, I think so, and that's and we and we can adjust that, and then but I, I will co-sign the, the advisory committee's frustration on being provided numbers that don't include a non-cola number. I am I have no problem with the departments saying what they would like for cola, but from a budget management standpoint and just being making it easy to say if we did this cola, what would it look like for everyone? Having all the departments say if we didn't get any cola, this is what we'd ask for. It's like we'd need and this would reflect additional hours and or any merit increases they feel that people need. Yeah. It's like go ahead and put that in in your increase but don't but then give me the cola on top of that as a separate number because then i can take that we can take that non-cola number and game and do the scenarios for well what would it look like if we did three percent cola what about five what about 12. things so, like that and it just because otherwise if they only give us a number with cola baked in we have to figure out what it is well, and back well it out. originally and, and, and apparently we didn't enforce it but originally what was sent out to the department heads that it sounds like they failed to comply with was they were supposed to build bottom up pay budgets that included their prior year adjustments that were performance or or change in hours based and their COLA all split out separately. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like that did not occur. No, it's, it sounds like it didn't. I okay. didn't so I didn't it wasn't supposed to go on the spreadsheet. They were supposed to submit separate pay sheets. Mm -hmm. They can go back in the, in the uh, minutes. They, they did. Something like that in an initial pass, but then when Kelly's template came in, plus with the department sheets, they put in something their, different than what they put their on their cola sheets. into the into the, mm -hmm. the okay. final numbers. All right. So we had to deconstruct, uh, and then that's where maybe there's some. Confusing. So I think we also we'll have, have to do it better next year. I think we also have to worry about getting too razor thin because if the police thing ends up going through, and then we have to no. vote on that. Police is. Um, it depends on the. T um, I have a question. Do you expect the? I have heard nothing. Okay. Do you do you expect that we will have that we will exit arbitration before annual town meeting? With the rate this is going, no. Okay. Then I have discussed the situation with Lori. Lori has said that Lori has recommended that we budget fiscal year twenty five what we think reasonable and prudent. Any shortfall uh, uh, when the contract is finalized. And we is, are, and it comes due paying the back wages for the contract for contract year, fiscal year 24. And as much as 25 has gone through, it's a wages account. We can deficit spend it. And 
If it's a big gap, we can call a special town meeting to adjust the budget. If it's not a big gap, we can use, uh, basically we can transfer money from other parts of the budget and so it won't it, affect us getting to the it levy. will it will it, it will not hit the levy limit it instead it will reduce the free cash in after we close fiscal year 25. so and so i mean we're going to have to pay it one way or the other but this year it doesn't hit the tax rate it's like especially and i don't want the back pay for fiscal year 24 to hit this year's tax rate so this makes perfect sense to me now my thinking is we should probably try and get a seven or eight percent raise in there or we can talk about it but get get the budget line for fiscal year 25 close to what we expect is where it's going to cost they are going to cost us this year because i want to make sure that we're paying for it that if we need to pay for it it should be in the budget but the fiscal year 24 we would probably pay that with free cash anyway this is just a different way of getting it into free cash <coughs> and by impairing future free cash rather than having to set aside current free cash for that or just crunching the budget having nothing left at the end of the year because all the surplus accounts had to pay that wage that wages deficit i just texted so, lee to see if he heard anything mm -hmm. yet okay so that so i talked to Lori about this and that's what that was that was her recommendation i had a different recommendation. she said no 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 do it this way and I said, sounds like a good idea. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so, so that gets it. So that's so, but that does that is that does make it incumbent on us to uh, to look at the wages number for the uh, for the patrolman and make sure we put in a good number for fiscal year twenty five. Right. Okay, so two, yes, uh, two, two things. <laughs> One, um, we did take your uh, best recommendation about the five percent of the board. For the, for the police right so that that is in our numbers that'll, yeah, get, us at least, that'll get us at least in the ballpark yeah mm -hmm. so if you so i added five percent to their wages when we did it instead of cola just to get an idea of what their wages would be mm -hmm. i just had one question about one of the line items for the police um it says police part-time and overtime my only question was would i be adding a five percent to that also Yes. Okay. Because um, and I did. I just wanted to make sure okay. that was yes. right. Because <laughs> um, what it is is that was a um, that was for paying part time officers and for the full time officers overtime. Effectively, we no longer have part time part officers. Yes. But it's like, but we haven't changed the name because it still gives flexibility. Okay. And since their base pay is going up by whatever amount, the overtime if they work the same amount of overtime, we will need that five percent or ten percent or whatever percent more in the overtime account also. So you're right okay. to increase it. Okay, perfect. So Thank Lee you. just texted me. He said um, what he heard is there's two towns ahead of us, but he doesn't think it's gonna be that much longer. Okay. So so just That's again middle of April, not that much longer still might be <laughs> yeah. at, at, at this phase not much longer is June or July. <laughs> <laughs> I think this he's as frustrated as we are. They, they asked for it. I'm, I'm sorry, they requested arbitration. <laughs> Allow me to be clear on that one. <laughs> they are the ones who requested arbitration. So, so I thought we were close. Yeah, uh, just just close one other too. point, sorry for the, for the background, but just, just to give you an idea, um, Lori's calculated levy limit was 10,574,918. Our latest budget which includes the legal expense decrease or holding constant was at um ten million five four nine seven eight eight so we're within like forty thousand and then tom is still working on the numbers on, on, on for for the original so i think we're so we're a little closer than i thought but we're one one clarification that number jeff gave is the operating budget consistent with not breaching the levy limit our levy limit is around six million. The operating budget is tax levy plus state aid plus local revenues, which which adds up to that ten million dollars you listed. But the levy limit is distinct and is a part of that. It's about yeah. sixty sixty five percent. Yeah, but so really, just, so I just, mean, what I mean, we're I mean, talking about is functionally functionally function, what we're talking yes. about is what what can we spend without requiring an override or an but, exclusion. But you know there's someone who's watching this that's going to say they don't understand the budget if we don't make sure that we're aware of that. Right. Okay. And I, I want to show just, I was throwing, you know, the 100,000 number around, it's, it's less than that. So I just wanted to clarify that as you're doing your one. Yeah. And so just big picture wise, with a 4% presumed COLA, which was our target, 
That has an operating budget of, uh, the current calculation is $10,511,000 and less than $5. And what was the levy? Hold on. I or a total to... available. Well, you know, this year, we'll, get it next well year. I, I hate to put it this way. I mean, the person that taught me about, like, when I first went on the Finance Committee Advisory Committee, they, and granted, the budget was smaller then. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, 70s, 80s, they targeted being within $50,000 of the levy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we're, if we're 65000 away, granted, it's a bigger budget, so it's less percentage. I, I'm still not, I'm not freaked out about that, right? We're not over, we're technically within our means. Typically the, the funds fall out better because we're always very conservative about our local receipts. Mm -hmm. And just like the, you know, and, and like many things, 10% of our local receipts today, which is what we tend to like underestimate our local receipts at, right? We only estimate our local receipts at about 90% of what we're expecting to actually take in. 90% today is a lot more than 90% 30 years ago when people were do using 50,000 away from your, your spending limit. Let's call it spending limit instead of levy limit because it's the mm -hmm. levy plus all those other things. That's a healthy place to be, right? It means we're spending the money on the things we need to spend the money on but we're not going outside of our means, we're not asking for an override, we're not asking for an exclusion. Yeah, yes. I, 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 was, I was very concerned six weeks ago when- We thought it was over. When we were 100,000 over. Yeah, but, but 50 under is a good place to be. 65,000 yeah. under is a good place to be. That's that's I, kind I of that sweet spot. I sleep over that and then I recovered. So. I, I knew somewhere someone had done math wrong if we were 100K over. It just didn't make any sense. Well, I mean, you, you had more years in this uh, situation than I yeah. did, but... Uh, uh, let's see, one challenge is that the numbers I received from Lori did not put a safety factor into local receipts. They always have a safety factor in local receipts. She just didn't tell you. She, has... she put the, num the number that's in there is the number that is in our tax recap. And they don't put the safety number in tax recap. They put the actual local re expected local receipts. No, oh. that's a projected That's a projected number that's 90% right. of what you're they right. received right. a year prior. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> bang the table, Beth. I know you want to bang the table. Okay, I, I will, uh, I think, think on consideration, I see your point and I will defer to it. Thank so you. it's like I will I will double check offline just to assuage double, double, my concern. Du double check offline to assuage your concern. But there's not an accountant in this state that puts 100% of their expected local receipts in that tax recap. Uh, okay. Right. Thank you for thank you for the reminder. That's what I need to see. So can, so given that, uh, yes, Jeff. Can I have two, two other questions? I'm not trying to direct the conversation, but I'm trying to get out of here at a certain point too. So um, on the the publication of the Warren book, the advisory committee used to do it. Kelly took it over. Is it going to stay with one of you individuals at some point? You you have the printing information from Tom now? I have, um, I had contacted a printer. I, it did get some okay. quotes. All right, so yeah. we're okay and we shouldn't have a, have a problem it, this it, year. Well, last year I reached out to the printer and did it. And as you see, he did a little cock guide, so we're not going to go probably with that printer. But yes, we're this uh, the slide. Okay, so I'm, gonna I'm not going to put that on the checklist for, for us this year. Just for not for okay, printing, good. no. So it, as far as what I'd like to do with, with these numbers, Tuesday we're going to get together and continue to whatever you scrub them, I guess is the word. Mm -hmm. Because I would, I would like to be able to put you know, one number in each one of these lines in Kelly's original spreadsheet where it says advisory committee, mm -hmm. okay? And, and then have you send it to, you know, to whatever. So um, I would like to know at some point, do we need an official group of the advisory committee to meet with you again to go over any final resolution or we'll determine that tonight whether or not we need to have another meeting. Is that basically what you're I would say that if, if 
advisory controls the numbers that advisory, the advisory recommends. And so therefore, if you are comfortable saying these are our recommendations and we, and if you want to talk about them, that's fine. We don't see the need to talk about them. Then you send them over, and if we want to talk to you about them, we'll ask, we'll set up a meeting. Conversely, if you're looking at your numbers and saying, we would like to talk to the select board before we make our final recommendations, then we'll set up a joint meeting and we will talk. So it's, it's one of those, if either, my thought is if either party wants to talk, we'll talk. But if you're good with the numbers and we're good with the numbers, we can just roll the put the numbers into okay, the final I'm, form. I'm trying to figure out when does it have to go? It has to go two weeks before the town meeting and the, then you want to finalize things in the next two weeks, right? Because that's when we have this meeting tonight. The, the warrant book needs to be posted, or the, the warrant needs to be posted beforehand. I believe it doesn't have to be the book, but generally it is. And that has to be done two weeks before the town meeting. Town meeting's on the 6th. And so that means it's the 20th, 25th, that means on or about the 18th of May, the book, the printing has to be done. And the book has to be, copies of the book have to be put out in town hall. We need about two and, weeks. And I would say, two, and I would say, uh, Karen, two yeah. weeks, if we want the book, book locked down um, two weeks before, we want to target two weeks before it needs to be printed and distributed. Yeah. Okay. Well, so like so, April so I'm, I'm going or, to meet when it's So that would be May 4th. Ready. Which is which is not the right day of the month. I'm sorry. What was the no, question? I was just asking when it's going to be finalized so I can send it to the press. Yeah. So we're basically looking at April. You know, to give us some wiggle room. April 30th. So if we if there's some no. drastic May, change. May 9th. Are we going through any of these line yeah. items? May not. May 9th is two weeks before May 20th. Is four weeks before town meeting. So I would say it's like you're. It's like. The numbers have to be finalized, which means if there's any discussion, the discussion has to be finished by that day. Not just sending the numbers over and saying now we now we right, discuss right. it. And that so, is and that is a Thursday. It's out of cycle, and so if we needed that day to to lock things down, it's not the worst day of the week to do it. All right. But I mean, our our objective will be to get everything spoke. Yes, next but that week is that is you over. You know our recommendations mm -hmm. yeah. and then with the final um we haven't voted on the war article but we'll vote on those and and then send them over to yeah. everyone <laughs> yeah make, make sure to include karen because she's the one who's going to yes. be putting yes. your information yes. and yeah and that is uh may 9th is three weeks from today okay and so the select board is uh, scheduled to meet an open session two weeks from today so if there's not a lot to discuss we could aim to to squeeze it in then if there's a lot to discuss, it's no, no. Is what the, the ninth. The ninth. That's, that's is is the we need the budget closed so that it can so that the so that the book can be finalized and sent to the printer and printed. Right, but the select board meeting you're talking about is what day? May second. May second is our next open session. May second. And so, if, if there's not a lot that needs to be talked about, we could squeeze it in then. If there's a lot to talk about, maybe we can squeeze it in. Maybe we need another day. Okay, but so so then my sorry to sort of uh, all these questions coming up, but um, the next question is: last two years we've had a a presentation of the preliminary budget by the town administrator. Does that are, will you continue that tradition, or wait till next year to do it when we have a town administrator here for a year? You have anticipated my question. I am in favor of another, of continuing the budget presentations to the town. Oh, I like to do right. I don't know if I want to. Are you volunteering? I am volunteering. To do it. <laughs> Should I still be a member of the board? Because that is after my life. Oh. Day. Right. So, and, and my my only thought there is that you know we've been arguing. I mean, not saying we've been promoting that for as long as I've been on the advisory committee. So, you know, just for the transparency and just communication, yeah. and everything and, else. And Tom, to, if you get um, if if you get voted off, I'll 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 back it up. Okay. Right, but but so I think I, I tried to talk to Kelly last year. I said, well, you know, if six people show up, that's not really doing well. So we have to have like you know Mike Siri put a blast out or use the cable station or whatever, so we get more than six people, so that people understand what's. I think we have money left, and I'd I'd be interested to see what we have left in the select board budget that we couldn't just do a postcard mail or. I was on. thinking a postcard. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, just letting people. Just a know bulk about postcard. Yeah, yeah. Just a bulk postcard. That mm -hmm. says, you know, hey, 
budget meeting. Yeah. I mean, we, we the advisory committee participated the last two years. We didn't we didn't say anything, but I mean, we were the majority of the people there. I think you know, Mr. Holcroft was there. There was, um, I think, uh, Kermit. And I don't was, think it was well enough advertised. Bruce, no. uh, I, I think we missed Bruce the Clark. Answer. I think was there, but there weren't that many yeah. people. But, yeah, but, but I think a postcard, that. you know, a bulk postcard to every household is pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, we can. I, I, I think that um, it is. Um, we can discuss that. We can discuss exactly how we want to get the notification out at another time. Sure. Is that? Um, right. I, I just raised the issue because I'm just going through the thought process from what how it occurred last year. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So. I was, I forget what I was doing, but I discovered several new chart types that just like, ooh, <laughs> sunburst. Under request a projector. Sunburst charts, <laughs> waterfall charts. <laughs> and so, all right, so big picture, just coming back to that. Fortunately, this is, Kelly is, requested year after year after year to not put sums unless they're required by law and articles that we still have articles all over the, this warrant that have sums in the articles you mean in the in the in the actual motion article text in the actual article text when it should be in the motion um, no but we can we let's let's address that now yeah so, 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 uh, and let me just give you an example. So, so people don't get hung up on a number. Yeah, well, well, that where it ties your hands and some right. of the screwy hat. So, uh, and let me just start from the beginning and then go forward. And I know you wanted to talk about operational budget, but um, so, I, I mean, Article Four is safe. The Water Department wants to put forty thousand dollars in their article. I don't want to fight with them about it. Um, ambulance receipts, res receipts, transfers, I'd prefer a sum of money there and just have the sum be in the motion because I actually want to talk to Donna about the fact if we have, so first of all, Article 7, it says needs a sum certain. No, it doesn't. Just Article 7 needs to be, we'll vote to transfer a sum of money from ambulance receipt reserve to cover the deficit for fiscal year 2024 wages account or take any action there too. And then we can use whatever sum we have at town meeting. So it makes no sense to be holding that text for a sum certain when we can just put the generic language in there. I'd like to take the sum certains out of the other two ambulance articles if Donna's okay with that. Because if we have a wages deficit this year, I know they probably went over this information with advisory, even though it's like silly because of the fact that they're self-funding and they're doing it from their mm -hmm. reserve receipt funds. So it doesn't impact the tax rates. I don't know why we even fight over it, mm -hmm. right? But let's just make sure with her that they don't have to have a second article for deficit spending next year because that doesn't make no sense. Right. If they, right. If it looks like they're going to need more money for next year because of their issue with the with the clawbacks. Right. Is that that? we fund it enough so that it just goes smoothly. Right, exactly. It's, so it's, it, And you're right, putting more money in doesn't affect the tax rate, it just takes more money out of their, the, the money that they earn for the service they provide the town. Right, so, um, so those I noticed. Um, Article 13, somebody put a note, borrowing only per the select board vote. No, the select board vote was, we're not gonna necessarily allocate free cash against it, Okay, um, it doesn't change the motion. What it changes our recommendation for funding, which if the town decides not to listen to us and make the, and we are gonna make the, we're gonna make the motion as a bar. Okay, either the town votes it down, somebody can amend it on the floor, mm -hmm. but we still, we don't have to, it, just because we voted where that funding was gonna come from doesn't mean that 
We put borrowing only. Yeah. Okay. That, that was just a, basically a note. Okay. But it, obviously it wasn't going to go on the. Right. On the, well, on it's not. That. It's not necessarily obvious because when I see that language okay. and then I okay, see that right. note, what my okay. assumption is is someone intends on changing the language in the warrant article to be borrow, no. and I, no. I, I think that that is not advisable for us to do. Um, I think so, we need to be careful of what we put into the that ne in the article text section versus in the notes section. Right. So the, the article text section should be kept clean to be clear what right. we're planning to motion. There's all kinds of weird markups on here about using the three fiftieth money, but we haven't talked. I don't. I haven't seen a, a what the balance is that's left, or is it on the? No, we report? haven't. It hasn't been closed out either. And I got to talk to Shelby. She's got checks that came in and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so, and and, and this stuff is all over the place right now. So. And that I, should just be a. That should, again, that should be left blank for me. Well, first of all, yeah, and and it's and it's on here in like a bunch of weird ways, and I don't know. Did Kelly put this on? Yes. Okay. So she was Her probably. Initials there. Well, right, but Article 33, I don't see any initials on. I don't know who put it in. Um, so oh, I don't know. I didn't do that. Yeah. So Article 33. The only 33. thing I changed was with the yellow, with the uh, highlighting is, and I numbered them. Okay. Everything else came from Kelly. Okay. So it, it looks like we've got a like a bunch of, and it looks like we've got a bunch of them relative to that that have all kinds of weird like exact values in there. Is um, that when they're consolidating money from from various articles to the fire station repair? Well, that one, that, that one's the way it's phrased is actually that's the only one I don't object to because it was, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, it's it, those those balances. It's appropriate to have those balances in because it's specifically a transfer. Yeah, and, that and makes sense. That balances on that. So that one I, I didn't take any umbrage to. It was just um, um, the. Uh, Stuff like, uh, where was it? Uh, there was a couple in here that was, it's Article 33, and it's like blank. It just says, be allocated to another project, and it had a very exact number. So. I, yeah, I think that's intended to, from what I remember that discussion was that we had the money left over, and the idea was that we would identify a worthy local cause to donate that money to, because I don't think we can, I, I think my recollection is, and this is a little vague, is that we couldn't sweep it into there. Um, well, these are donations, so we can't sweep them into the town accounts, and so I think the recommendation was, we're done with 350th, we have this leftover money that was donated, let's give it to a food okay. pantry or this group or that. Uh, okay, group. so okay, so that's donated funds. Right, and All so right. The, I think the amount, the specific amount there, is appropriate because we're dealing we're dealing with a specific amount. Oh. In Article Thirty Three, we but for that we need to we would need to identify a a recipient for the money that we consider appropriate or some other use. Why wouldn't we do something like the cemetery perpetuity fund or something like that? That's <coughs> something that's, or or those funds could go to the maintenance of the previously donated signs to the town. I I had talked to Jean, and this is a while back about having it go to like because it is a charity. The town hall. Um, the whatever 50th the 50th committee was a charity. No, the um, friends at the Brookfield town. Yes. Hall? Okay. Because they can use that money can be used for any improvements to the town hall. Right. Or I, we get to give it to friends of the library, given how much money they've invested in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eighteen Common Street. Yeah. I, I I think either one of those two or uses split it, is, or is split it between the two of them. Yeah. Because yeah. they're, they're both, you know, kind of partners in making the town better. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think they're. Use those uses of the money would be in spirit of, do, of but it's people the, who donated to 350. Is the Friends of the Library a qualified 501c3? I don't believe so. They may be. I don't 
they, I, they are I, a private group, and if they're fundraising, I would suspect they are, but we, we should very I think there was questions about okay, that. Let's add, Whereas I know the I, town I know hall the one friends, is legit. Yeah I, know, yeah, I know he did all the paperwork. Yeah. So. Okay. So instead of allocated to a project, I think that the verbiage in that article needs to be donated to, um, uh, you know. I think specific donation targets. Yeah. Is is that, and we, and we can discuss that now. We can discuss that. Well, and that's the three. Is that from the three fiftieth committee? Yeah. yeah. Three fifty. Um, uh, fund 152, 350 at the donations. So I could talk to that committee and see if they want to have any recommendation where it goes, or does yeah. that matter or not? It, you know, we're certainly open to their recommendation. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, but yeah. For, for Article 34, uh -huh. that's leftover warrant article money. I think that should be swept into free cash or allocated to another article. Well, my thought would be, how, how much was the key card thing that we took off for the town hall? We didn't have an amount for it. Right. That was one of the reasons okay. we took it off was we because never we were too late. On it. The t I, I talked to Bill Simpson Jr. and he did. He has started looking into it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anything will come along in time for us to include it in the project. It, it, sorry, included in the warrant for this year's town meeting. It'd be nice to get it in. I just don't see us being in position to push it over the line. Okay. Oh, so there's a difference between these two. Yeah, there is. There are two yeah. separate things. One is the town meeting vote, and the other one is uh, um, the donated funds. Right, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so, to, my, to my mind, Article 34 is $16,000 that we can yeah, and that was put to use, use, whether that's rolling over to next year's free cash or funding well, I wouldn't put year. it into free cash. I would, I would either reallocate it either into OPEB mm -hmm. or uh, there might be rules on that because I remember that's that's a that's a war that's warrant article money that's that's money that was oh right right right, right, right. Yeah, the donated yeah, money the donated so money go. definitely has rules on it right. and we probably should check but I don't believe that the the town the ATM vote money would have any limitations on it okay I don't think Mm -hmm. But it's probably worth checking with Lori. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think that one we can just reallocate. But it's too much money to just sweep. Right. I think there are rules about how much you can kind of just sweep and roll over to free cash. Really? I think okay. that from from warrant articles. Well, to my, to my mind, if the warrant article served its purpose, then it makes sense to dissolve it. And if you don't, well, have the accountant it, obviously wanted us to vote it because it was sponsored by the accountant. <laughs> Could be maybe she's maybe she entertains reallocating to free cash. I think she just I think because it's enough money, she wants us to affirmatively close the account. No, I think it's because she wanted to defray the strain on free cash. Oh yeah, yeah. That's maybe. Absurd. So I think what she was saying, recommending, is we should use it for something like. And honestly, I think that that fundamentally. Um, Right, that would cover like the fire thermal imaging device and yeah. the flowers mm -hmm. and, you know, or let's see, 3,000 and 12,000. So we could do the thermal imaging device and the gravel for private roads. Yeah. No one has expended, the gravel for private roads has not been expended. Right. We haven't spent yeah. any of that money. No, we'll so my inclination is why put more money in if we if we have it. Well, used I think it. we go back to the dollar because we still have the the. the <laughs> yeah, I I did talk to Gary about that, and he said to leave. I think he said to leave it in there because they need to use it. Yeah. They still need to do it. They still need to do the work. So. Okay, but no one's come to. But there's no work to do because. The use of that money required an affirmative vote by the select board to authorize the use of those resources. And no one's come to us asking us to use that money. So there's, th there think, should, there should think not he be was kind any of, of that. I'd have to talk to him again. I think he was kind of putting it off until the next superintendent came in to... What, to forward the request to us? Right. Okay. 
because they don't have the bandwidth to do it then, right then, now. Let, then, then let's, um, okay, let's leave it on there for now. We can always take it off or it, it's easier to get rid of it later and pass it over. Yeah, well, that, well that's, it. that. so I guess my question is, I, I don't understand unless, and this is a question for Lori, and since mm -hmm. you're mostly driving the budget in the Warren articles, maybe you want to have the conversation with her because I don't want to confuse stuff that's mm -hmm. going on between you and But why do we have that as a separate article when it, if we have an amount that's in our 350th celebration Warren article leftovers, we would use the verbiage of transfer, you know, a sub, tra you know, raise appropriate transfer or borrow and then just do the motions to move it from the 350th account to whatever articles we want to apply it to. That's that's typically how you would handle that, unless because it's 350th anniversary money, we have to handle it differently, even though it was yeah. a town meeting vote. We can check. I, I think maybe uh, reallocated to is more of a placeholder, and then once we said things, then she would say, "Okay, you want to? Yeah, that's you want to reallocate that to other warrant to other warrant articles you're looking to fund. Yeah, that's fine. But until we actually said this is what we want to do with it." She might have left that there, but let's find out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is that I don't think that should be on there as a separate article. I think we just need to know the number and then decide which articles to do as a transfer. Mm -hmm. oh, so, so instead of pushing the money out of that, we in the other warrant articles, we say to be funded by a transfer from this other warrant article account. Instead of free cash. Yes. Okay. The, I, yeah. And then, yeah. and then what that does is it just leaves your residual free cash higher, which mm -hmm. can either roll to next year's free cash, or we could add an article at the end to put, you know, if, if we think we're going to have enough to bother, put it in stabilization. Mm -hmm. So one yeah. or the other. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, this is $16,000. So the most it's going to give us afterwards is Close to twenty thousand. Close to twenty thousand. Yeah. Which, to my mind, I think that's more. Just roll it over. I mean, it probably is. At, at, at that level, fifty thousand. Yeah. I think I'd start to think about stabilization because yeah. our stabilization accounts are in good shape at the moment. Yep. All right. So is that uh, could, coming on? So we need to check with Lori. The action there is check with Lori. Mm -hmm and determine whether it's appropriate to even have that article as an article or really do we just need a number and then to make a determination about which other articles we're going to do as transfers from that account rather than as uh, transfers from free cash. But, but fundamentally, Beth, it's one of two things is going to happen. Either the money in this account is not sufficient to what we want to do, or we want to fully deplete this account, in which case one of our other warrant articles is going to have to be to be funded with X dollars from the 350th warrant article account and another amount to free cash. Like if it's a $5,000 article, we might pull 2000 from the left, from 350. Like honestly, I, honestly, if it was my choice, I would take the $16,000 and throw it in the fleet repair replacement account that mm -hmm. we haven't funded in a couple of years so that if we have something come up on one of our ancient pieces of equipment that we would be able to do mm -hmm. something with it. Yep, and fleet repair and replacement is sitting at $38,000 and it shows no expenditure since we appropriated the money in June of 21, which doesn't mean that we can't put money in. Okay. We, could even, we could even put the money in towards uh, to defraying the cost of acquiring the backup. Correct. And then that reduces the I mean, I mean, that's one of the things that we could do is to defray. Why didn't they use that when they were doing the repairs on the truck? Which one? The, the big truck. Uh -huh. I could have sworn we've signed, I, I could have sworn we've authorized a couple of repairs out of there that aren't showing, but maybe. Maybe and my my brain is maybe they didn't, that and it's maybe they didn't know to get it's it a, out of there. It's a warrant article, so therefore, if they had spent this money in December of twenty one, it would show as debited against that account, warrant article. Right. That this doesn't the warrant articles don't just show this year's expenditures. Yeah. It shows the duration since the creation of the account. Yeah. Okay. All right. I've got a, I've got a note to check with Lori on that. Yeah. And under and I will talk to her. I'll give her a couple scenarios and say what it's like. We're not sure how we want to do it. If we want to do it this way. How does that work? Yep. And my thought is fully allocate this to something else, and, or allocate 
Yeah. yeah, how do we use this to fully fund some articles? How do we use it to partly fund articles? Yeah. And it's and, just a question of where it's going. Yeah, and again, 38 and 39, even though I know we're going to do the 50 and 75, I just yep. prefer to get the number out of there. I, I'm behind that. And then we've got the, we do have the citizens' petitions. I think in, we've generally not taken a position on those, and we have no say as to whether they go on the warrant, so we just make sure they get put in there. Yeah. Just don't want to. So I don't see the Arbor Day um, article that we said we were going to put on here. I, I don't think we had, an, I thought we, we signed an Arbor Day proclamation. No, we also need an article where we adopt the Mass General Law. Oh, that's right. Oh, Thank okay. you. No. All right, so we'll, so we'll need to add that in. Yeah, okay. So that needs to go on there. And I will and, take a motion to extend the meeting as we are at our Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I'll make, yeah. I'll make a motion to extend the meeting with regret. <laughs> Second. All right. All in favor of extending the meeting without much enthusiasm, please say aye. 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 So from a, well, Beth works on that, I'm going to shift over to the, uh, to what I call the big picture, which is where we stand in relation to the levy limit. Okay. And where is that? Other than that, I think I've covered pretty much everything. I can hand my notes over to Karen, and she can always ask me what my chicken scratch actually means. Mm -hmm. All right. I so. Do, I do just have one question. Oh. Yes, sir. At the last selections meeting, I believe, maybe it was two ago, there was a question about adding somebody else to the last article. Is, did we find this out? Because I don't want to say his name, but he's on the last, art, on the very last article. And there was a question, I thought, of somebody oh, else. Oh, yeah, whether, um, yes. I think it's Bill Smith. Bill Smith, yeah. So did we find this out? Is he getting added? Is I forgot to ask the chief. Okay. I meant to. Let me text him while I'm thinking of it. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, at the moment, based on our projected revenue and an operating budget of $10,511,005, um, rounded to the nearest dollar, um, we're looking at 63,000. Uh, uh, that would bring us in below the levy limit by six, almost $64,000, which is not as close as I would like, and I, I was did not have the time to look at how much the levy is going up. But so I don't know if we're are we going to go through the line items at all, or uh, we will be going through the line items. Okay. Um, more on a does anyone do we need to talk about this? Do we need to talk about this? Okay. But it, we will have a chance to talk about all the line items. Um, I will say that the the budget that we have proposed is. Where did that, chunk a day working on some oh there it is it got moved there we go the this year's operating budget is for uh, the budget with the four percent cola brings us in it uh, is an increase of four hundred seventy three dollars four hundred four hundred seventy three thousand four hundred forty five dollars over the previous year which is a which is a significant increase and it's going to be uh, there's, it's going to increase the levy. Um, of that increase, 62% um, of that increase, if my math is right, is due to the elementary school. They have, um, we've talked to the elementary school and they have a, uh, they've had a significant increase in special education expenses mm. that they are required by law. So it's not like they're hiring more teachers, it's not like they're getting fancy new equipment um, with the taxpayer money. It's they have students who need services and they need to do this. Okay. So it's, um, I'm sure it's going to come up, and I am 
disinclined to balance uh, the balance uh, to, to to severely impair the rest of the town in order to mitigate the impact of the increase of the school budget on the tax bills. I don't. I don't. I, we can do the, the town can do that on the floor. But yeah, I don't think we should be be, be punishing the people at this end of Central Street for what's going on at the other end of Central Street. Which is another way. Yes, that's that's a very succinct way of saying what I was trying to say. Yeah. And so it's like and 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 so we, we can present it to the town and they and, can and I think make that's part of both the public presentation and then mm -hmm. I think we needed to have a, a shortened version of the public presentation at the beginning of town meeting and let people know where the changes are coming from and help them understand that that's what's driving it so they don't start fighting over pennies. Right. Is that, yeah, that's, I agree. There are three big increases in the budget. Um, the Selectman General Government is 13% of the increase. Um, assessments is 13% of the increase. And schools is 63% of the increase. And, and Everything it's, else and is it's, And most of the stuff in our budget that's an increase is relative to the website services and technology. Correct? And that's um, what I wanted to talk about. I was going to say, yeah. technology and legal are the two biggest increases. Um, and then this, the, uh, select, the select board goes up. I think a lot of that is salary is the uh, COLA, because the select board is going up 4%. And I think a lot of the select board is salary for the people that work in the town hall. And then treasurer, then a lot of the uh, treasurer, assessor, they, they're Cost I think we should just c piss everybody off and give ourselves a hundred percent pay increase. <laughs> well, I don't know. The, the the recommended numbers I got from Sarah had our selectman salary at ten dollars. <laughs> it's like ah, he must not like us. It's, but I but I, I talked to the advisor and he said that was a clerical error and so we 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 sorted that out. I was up saying we weren't worth the plug Nicholas, but that was. <laughs> <laughs> that, I was taking. I was wondering if that's what they were trying to tell us. Oh, just, just one other point. I have to leave shortly, so yeah. um, I know I had some discussion with, with you individually, but we did give serious consideration to uh, recommending that the, the treasurer go from a full time to a part time and dropping the salary to fifty thousand. So. Um, that was another one of our cost-saving ideas. And I know you, you had mentioned that was difficult for coverage, but I just wanted to throw that out there because that's probably going to be another 30000 in savings in addition to the legal fees that we chopped it. So that's basically the 50000 uh, that we felt was more or less only we would, we would, we would have. But we, we de declined doing that, but we would certainly um, I had, I had to sort of rein people in because they wanted to do that regardless. I said, well, no, they had to select and have changed the position, so we can't do that. But um, that was a natural progression, just given my experience of seeing how well the Treasury Department is running now and the fact that you could probably do it less than 40 hours a week. So that was my last strategic comment. The, the, the line items, um, we have particular ones. I, No, I've, um, I've had some discussions also, and uh, that was a matter I was intending to, uh, to have the board discuss in the, uh, and I thought we could do it in the context here. Since we are talking the budget, we can talk about staffing and force structure in the, in the context of how do we want to, what do we want to do next year, and therefore, because that's going to drive the budget. Uh, the uh, uh, leveraging Jeff's, uh, or building on what Jeff said is the, um, one of the ideas that, that, that I've, had, I've had discussions about is a part-time treasurer and to also have an assistant treasurer slash treasurer clerk. The advantage being that in addition to a more cost-effective structure, we now have two people capable of running things here. And if some, one of those people were to leave, we would still have someone here to be able to, to handle payroll and keep things going so we're not we got a big payroll! Because I think we all know what that felt like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And, and, so that, and so that's something that, uh, that is of interest to me. 
uh, and I don't know if that's uh, appealing to the rest of the board and if that's something that we want to. Uh, I'm not sure tonight's the right night for it just because we got enough other stuff on our plate, but if we want to discuss it later and then revisit the budget based on that, or if we wanted to put the budget through like this and then restructure and reallocate the budget after the new year just because of time, because it's like we, we gotta get the budget ready and present it. And if we can't figure out what our plan is, I don't think that should I don't think that should tie our hands from doing something we, we think is good for the town. Can we talk to Sharon about how long she could actually service both communities yet or is it too soon for her to I be I think it's too soon. I she sent an email today where she's uh, uh I would I would think three or four weeks give give her two pay cycles. Uh, the first one is going to be getting used to things. Second one, she'll have a good idea how she's settling in, and then see how she feels bandwidth do, wise. Do we have the position currently posted as full time? It is currently posted as full time. Yes. Okay. So we we would need to revise that posting to part time, and we would also need to. Well, no, because because the hours could potentially be negotiated. We could have it out there as being full time. Anything over twenty hours is benefited, mm -hmm. right? A reduction in in the overall hours could be part of the discussion. I mean, with, this is her first applicants. week, and she's well, at sixteen. But some of that's because she's learning. No, right, no yeah. I understand yeah. that. But what I'm saying is that whether it's her or somebody else, it doesn't really matter. If mm -hmm. it's posted as full time, but we negotiate a part time schedule with the individual taking the role, mm -hmm. it doesn't invalidate the current posting. Mm -hmm. The only thing we're bound by by state law is that we can only post what's in our bylaws as positions. How many hours those positions are is really the select board purview. So. Yeah, and I think when he's saying part time, he's you're not like suggesting less. Hours. Right, yeah, he's not meaning right. like 24 exactly. to 30 hours. Right, not. right. I mean, I wouldn't change the dollar per hour where it was calculated. Probably like, it's like, no, but I think like what Beth like just said, you're suggesting hours. maybe 30 hours or 25, but not under 19. No, no, no. Right, no. right. No, I, I'm just somewhere between that 20 and I'd right. say 30, 20. 20. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like four, it, it, yeah. Like, yeah. like I mean, maybe four. in certain weeks it's it's more hours because of whatever yeah. is going on, you know, an audit or something. But, uh, yeah. yeah. And then in, in addition, um, uh, talking uh, as part of this discussion, the idea of implementing an employee self-service HR system so that pay stubs are available online, um, uh, onboarding paperwork, um, and uh, things like that can all be done self-service. It would reduce the load on the treasurer's office for personnel matters, mm -hmm. especially the routine personnel matters. Yeah. Is that something that I was intending to uh, bring to the board's discussion um, after we got over the budget hump. Okay. But that's something that uh, um, I, I talked to Sharon and Lori and they both um, felt that it was a, uh, a worthwhile thing to explore. Okay. But she's gonna have to onboard Pete the old fashioned way. Yep. All right. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure Pratt is all mostly self-service. Okay, self-service to the point of no service. DIY. <laughs> yeah, it feels more like DIY. And as a manager, you don't even know which of the four ticketing systems you need to put a ticket in when something's messed up. Freaking crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, but they, there is, they, they did say that there was a small cost, but that the operational savings in just the distribution of the pay stubs. Oh, it would and, be huge. And, go, and going to direct deposit would more than offset the cost of this and that there and that everything else is generally bonus especially with all the people down the street who are in our person respo responsible for personnel wise getting them to self-care yeah it's that like, would be great it, and it saves them a trip down here makes their life easier yeah okay so i, I think it's it's definitely something to, to put a uh, put a little pinhole uh, put a flag in a future date to discuss stick a pin in it exactly I think it's the colloquialism <laughs> that you're looking for. Yes. All right, so um, I would say just looking at big picture, just give me a second to create a quick formula to look at the variance between 
the advisory recommendation and the select board with um, the 2.4% COLA so that I can, yeah. all right, so now for this discussion, um, starting with, I'd like to start with general government. Um, advisory's recommendation is 969.9 thousand and um, the select board, the, what the select board is looking at with a 4% COLA is 993. So that is a 2.5% difference with select board being higher. So some of that is due, some of that is due to the uh, difference in COLA recommendations. And then we also have um, the advisory is, uh, I'm sorry, advisory has recommended uh, level funding legal, while right now the, uh, the, the select board, the recommended budget for the select board had legal going up 20,000. Um, I will say that we are, I am talking to the lawyer more now that Kelly is not available. And I think if And we... those bills are coming in. And so, uh, and I know we, I don't know how much we've spent this year. I, I would say if, if there's a big surplus, a lot of it is. But of the three to town, to... of the three town administrative candidates, none of them have a legal background. So, right. so they, would, they would not be in position. They're to... also going to be needing to use it. Yeah, though a lot of them are going to at least have a much better lay grasp of Mass General Law than yeah. they will, just because yeah. it's their full-time job. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my thought is is that it's like, yeah, we're, it, we're at 60% expended. Is the, link, is the link that Kelly sent out still a live link? Or is it yeah, that's what I'm on. Okay. And so I am, so and at that point, I am not convinced about lowering that. I, I understand advisory's position that we do have, it's like, but I guess the issue is the reserve fund is intended for unexpected expenses and legal's not unexpected. So I'm, it's, I'm, I'm not sure that that's something and I will, I will make, an, I'll make a note to ask Lori because I don't think the, advise, the reserve fund is intended to backstop an, underfund, an account that was underfunded if it was underfunded just because we didn't put enough money in. Whereas if we could justify something happened, like there, was a, like there was a lawsuit against the town, a lawsuit is unanticipated and covering the deficit due to an, a lawsuit that we didn't anticipate, that could be done. But just for routine matters, I'm more leery that that would be flagged by Lori or the auditor. I, I personally find it hard to believe that we could run up $80,000 a year in legal expenses just on routine town business. I mean, there's got to be, I think over the years, there's been like a couple of really big, nasty lawsuits that are well, we have a lot in of, there. Jeff? Oh, we have a lot of open meeting law, or uh, not open meeting law, whatever the requests are. Oh, uh, public record public requests. Public record requests, yeah. and those are hurting. Those require legal fees to, to Well, the, a lot of them require redaction by, by the legal counsel. And, that's and right now we're getting crushed with them. And, and the way that works is if it's 225 for KP to do those redactions, we only, the person only gets billed at $25 an hour. Yeah, there's a legally mandated. So we're, we're soaking up $200 an hour for yeah. these. Well, we need to find law for the redaction. That's well, Kelly work. was doing them, and now she's not. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, and so, and, and Jeff, I'll tell you, there, there was a lot of things I would bounce off Kelly that, now that she's no longer available, it's like, I have to go to Michelle. Ding, 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 goes the phone. And hopefully and a people new that town were saying that the town administrator wasn't saving us money are just full of crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> No, no I, I, I totally agree that we need a, as long as long we're doing to have a town administrator. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's like, and we don't, we don't have to converge on it. I, I'm j I, I say that more to, to, to declare that is part of the variance between the advisory recommendation and what was uh, recommended for the, uh, uh, on behalf of the select board. Yeah. I was going to say, it's not, it, we have not, the select board has not yet made a recommendation on the entire, on this part of the entire budget yet. So for some reason, my link is not the one. Does yours have advisors in there? Or no. Okay. Let me see file. Let me see where that is. Yeah, could you send out the link to the? No, you should be on the same one, no man. 
Is there a way to get this to tell me where the document is? Yeah, you go to file, and then... No, he's on the, he, he's on the same one. Are you seeing the advisory numbers in yours? No, you're not looking no. at the same one I am. I have advisory numbers in mine. Yeah, so can you share that link out? Yeah, I can. Oh. Okay. They haven't been updating the one that we have done. That's the no, well, I, that I updated this one. Sarah gave me the numbers and I copied and pasted them. Yeah, he copied and pasted them, yeah. Because okay, so I didn't have... Yeah, we. I, I, this has been online. Yeah, I created our own spreadsheet that way. We didn't mess with yours. <laughs> Well, as I said, we couldn't use hers as it was long, so we do it. The only thing is we did not, something for you guys to talk about at a later date, we did not add COLA to the town clerk's salary because he, the person got the increase last. Oh, that outrageous increase last year? What? The outra they got the outrageous increase yeah, last so year? Yeah, so we did not add COLA to his increase this year. We kept it. You level funded him? Yes. Yep. I can support that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we kept it at the 50000 the 50, that he got last year at the yeah. annual town meeting. We did not give him COLA. Yeah. Okay. So we level Great. funded him. I, I have All a COLA yeah. in for him by default. We can definitely visit that if that's yeah, just what to, the board wants. Yeah, just to talk about that mm -hmm. amongst yourselves. Right, I mean, that is at your discretion, I think. Yeah. And there, are, there are two FY25 budgets. Look at FY25 budget, not FY25 budget two. That was more my set aside as my playground. Do you see the advisory numbers in there now? In the link I sent? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And we'll just have to make sure that the there's one master copy that we have. We all know where it is and we all treat it properly. Yeah. I mean, the only two yes. other. Differences was the um, we had kept the town administrator number at whatever the um, where was it whatever was in the announcement it was at eighty nine rather than ninety something so yeah so that they saved were... us a couple of thousand oh, over the year Sarah, for the town administrator the number I have from you is uh, with a three point two percent cola yes yes so we. No, so we requested her, we level funded it and then we gave her 3.2%. Okay. She requested $93,318.63. It's a, it's a small difference. Yes. Oh, okay. she before, 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 new before coming cola. In. No, no, I, I think, she, I think, I think, that, I think she requested a 3.7% cola. Okay, with cola. Okay, so I didn't know that. So That's, I level funded it off of the 24 budget and then gave her cola. Okay. You, so yeah, you, 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 yeah. You, your, your recommendation is a 3.2 percent cola yes. over fiscal year 24. Okay. The initial request was 3.7, and then the budget I put in was a 4 percent cola to be consistent with everyone else in town. So yes. I think we're all looking to do the same thing. We just all have different. We just have our different. Ways. Difference, we, we <laughs> no. Well, we have our gap in what cola we picked. Yes. But yes. We're, we're doing the same thing, just with our with each of our own cola numbers, well, which yes. is which I'm fine with. But that's what that's one of the differences there. Yes. And let's see. And but besides that, there wasn't major differences. That must be Beth. Yes. Because <laughs> because Brad's not touching his computer, <laughs> and I can see Beth going. <laughs> I don't know where it got GC. What am I called? Uh, I have oh, guest contributor. That's interesting. Oh, because you, you uh, know, oh. no, because because you're editing through a link rather than through your ID. Oh. Okay. And so I, it's like yeah, well. I'll probably shut that link down and share it with you explicitly later. Okay. Like I said, I, I just, I got to get it through, but I, I needed a document that was useful for this and then shareable is next on the list. So, and, but anyway, coming back to that, so there is a 30, there's a $24,000 gap between our budgets. 20,000 of that is legal. Yeah. I think in the grand scheme of things, and, and I think most of the rest of this can be attributed to COLA, just saying. So, I, do you guys see any, do, do we need to really push on this? Mm -hmm. No, the, the only other one I just want to mention to Brad and, and uh, Beth before I leave was that we had split the difference for the, the, the fire chief's uh, salary or stipend, whatever he calls it, request. Salary. He had requested 18, I think last year was, was it 12 or 14? Yeah, 12. He was 12 last and, year. And we had 
voted. Put them in at 16, I think, right? Yes, yeah, we voted. So we that, voted that'll 16. be a little bit off, and we were, we were, uh, we have to double check the fire wages because he asked for a, a big increase for all of his <coughs> part time people because he said they were underfunded, but I don't recall what the, what the number yeah, was. Yeah, I have to talk to him because he requested the 66500 but the question I have for him was, does he want me to add COLA to that, or is he requesting that increase including COLA? Because I know it's for, you know, the 20 part-timers, full-timers, whatever yeah. over there, so I just need to ask him that if he requested the 66500 I don't Before Cola or after Cola? I couldn't remember. I do not. I, we should talk to Chief Martell about that because his wages account was, uh, this year is 58,710. Yes, yep. And he has expended 84% of that, which as a 411, that's two and a half months. So he is on, tr he is on track to slightly overexpend that account. But not by that, not by, I don't see the overexpenditure being enough to warrant the big, big increase there. So I would like to understand, understand. better why, wh what, how he arrived at his new number. Yes. I thought he had told us it was a wage adjustment based off of market. Yeah, and I thought it had something to do with like the number of incidences. No, increased. it doesn't have anything to do with the number of I'm incidents. I'm sorry, but increased. I didn't hear the last one. Said it was I it said it was it was a, it was just a market adjustment, like what other communities are paying their fire did chiefs. You, well, he, he did that for no, his. For I his, didn't see the numbers for, for for these these part these part time people. Which oh, yeah. 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 Did did the were the were the part time fire were the general were the were the, were the firefighters. Were they adjusted when we did the Collins Center adjustment in fiscal year 21 or 22? It was not a Collins Center adjustment. We adjusted them to get them above minimum wage when minimum wage changed. Okay. Yeah, so I just want some okay, more. Okay, but it wasn't, but it wasn't, we didn't look at market, we just up them. Okay. But that was two, two or three years ago, right? It was it was fiscal year twenty one or twenty two because the uh, I don't see the I don't see the uh, the mark to market adjustments we did in the history here and these this goes back to fiscal year twenty three. So if I notice wages flags that are missing, should I change? Should I put it in there? You can put them in there and it will it will apply them. I think I left it out because it looked like we were not applying cola to those or I wasn't sure. But the, we the, definitely let's discuss it because it's like I. I would have liked another day or two to, to, to right. get completely through this, but it was. Um, yeah. All I was trying to do verbally was sort of give you the, the key high, high points so that yep. you can go noodle it because yep. um, we spent too many hours on this, which you didn't need to, which is what I said last year also with everything. So it's just <laughs> it's the same old story. We'll get on the same page next year. And then I would, so. And then looking at police, I think we need about forty-three thousand. Well, how much do we want? How much do we want to increase this? My thought is that everyone else, our proposal, <coughs> the uplift from fiscal year twenty-three, if they were um, getting the cola that everyone else gets, would be seven percent. I'm sorry. Um, if the, the police wages, if they were not subject to collective bargaining agreement and they received the COLA that everyone else who works for the town gets, they would be, fiscal year 25 would be 7% higher than fiscal year 23. So to my mind, that's the, that's the starting 7 point. 7% higher? 7%. They would have got a 3% bump in fiscal year 24 and a 4% bump in fiscal year 25. So technically it would have been a little more than 7 because they'd have compounded, but I'm, I don't think it's that big a deal since it's, it's a seven. budget since it's a budget number and what they get is going to be based on the contract from arbitration not on what we put in the budget true but i'm but more we saying could do seven and a quarter seven and a half to address the compounding we could i mean the, the question becomes do we want to do do we want to do it's like just eight percent just to get a little more in there and reduce the hit I mean, I could, I could even, 
I could see. doing a bunch of math somewhere. I could see going to. I could see going to. I could see going up to ten. I, I don't. I couldn't see myself going past there. Just to make sure there's enough money in there, but. And then the police chief, he said that per his contract, he got a 3.2 okay. percent Jeff. increase. So just make sure that. Yeah, his, 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 his salary is contracted, and yeah. so. So that number should be in there. Yeah, it's yes. like, yeah. And so I think it's like, we can double check, we can double check what he asked for versus his contract. But I think, I, it's like, and fundamentally it's like, he's got a contract. I don't think, if we overfund the wage account, he's not gonna get the extra money. No, he only asked per. Well, so he requested only what. Yeah. He requested. He requested, what his contract. He requested his contract. He, yes. Yeah. yeah no, he didn't request point, anything yeah. over. Yeah. No. no I, 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 and I, I believe he does, but it's always it's like I trust him, but I like to verify also. Yes. And my point is, but if I don't verify and he asked for more than he was technically entitled to, I think he would only get what's in the contract. Yeah, he would. And yes. and therefore, yeah. it's not like overfunding the account would would obligate us to pay him. So it's like. It's just, it would just be money we'd be taxing the citizens that we don't need to, which I would, I would prefer to avoid. Yes. But if we did tax it, we would get it, we, it would not go to the chief, which is my main concern. So, because of that whole weirdness with the, uh, um, uh, for the police, I'm gonna, and you can double check my, my math when I do this, I was going to put another cell in there so that you, we can add three percent and then four percent to that line, it's just strictly on the on the police line to get a number. Well, if you multiplied it, if you multiplied the PCU twenty three number by one point oh three and then multiply that by one point oh four, you would effectively compound it in one step. That's what I'm. Yeah, it, it's actually easier because of the way you set up the formulas in the spreadsheet to go ahead and, and do it that way mm -hmm. by just adding a plus. Oh yeah, just instead of, uh, just replace that one plus O dollar sign two with whatever multiplier you want. I think I need to multiply that whole thing by this. Uh, yes. right, will you do that? I'll take a moment. Yeah. Uh, Figure it out. Yeah, except I didn't know. Uh, I didn't, 
your one of your formulas depends on the J column, and I have no idea what's in there. So I have to um, the J column? Let me see. Um, oh, I can unhide that, but uh, yeah, that's where, what I where, do. where is the, which formula relies on the J column? The uh, re requested percent increase. Oh, that is, um, <laughs> <laughs> almost <laughs> Well, and actually, the requested increase is zero, but the the uh, select board recommendation yeah. is yeah, different. You can, Never mind. You just have to unhide that. I, th I think that was more, that was that was more of an informational field. Yeah. yeah. I don't think anything's yeah. relying on on okay. that J column. All right, I'm ready to. We've lost Jeff and the, and the advisory mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. We need to just reconvene on this. When does no, I think we have oh, Sarah? We, do. we, have we still have Sarah. Sarah. Yeah, so, and, and, so I think yeah, but we're okay. almost past my bedtime. Okay. So. so well, let's let's see what we can do. So for so for police, I think the select board is um, your four one three six zero six is um, what's in cell T two. T two's got three percent. Okay, so and then basically, I added in like I added in the compounding if I did my formula right. Which, roughly speaking, it looks like it's about right, I think. Maybe not. Four one three. Um, I concur with the number that you came up with. You did. Yeah, I just, I just, I, I did it in a more straightforward, less flexible manner. Okay. But it's like, but it it, val it validates. So I think we have a good number there for. Um, At least a planning number. It, it's it's like yeah, it's like. I don't think it is serves the town to level fund that account, no, given no. that the contract will be finalized this year. Yeah. And so, therefore, this I think this is a, a good place to go. Okay. And so, all right. So I'm. Do we need to do the same thing on the overtime. Use those same. That yes, same we do. Formula? I would say you just copy the formula from O one o four to O one o seven. Okay. I set it up so that the formulas could be copied and everything would work the same. Yeah. Although we might need to, actually we should put, let me put a W in there because that is a wages. slightly different number than you. Well, I don't think my copy-paste worked. Okay. Yeah, my you're, copy-paste you're... did not work. All right. Do it a different way. Yeah, that looks like it's just a 4% uplift, would be my guess. Yep. So let me just, yeah, it didn't work. Does that look right? Uh, that is the exact number that I came up with. Okay. So we, and I used my the same form style formula I did last time. All right. So, and so, so I think that settles the police for what we want to recommend. Yep. All right. And uh, fire department, we have the uh, get it. There's the increase in fire wages, and there's the chief salary. I would I would like information if if he is if he is marking to market. I would like data to, to support that. Okay. Ask them to come in May second. Yes, and then the other um, now fire expenses. I was chatting with Kelly about that and find it. He said seventy two, but she she was saying that she thought he was always overexpended. I need to look at that. I was um, 
I'm not seeing his expense report. He's 70, uh, fire, you, fire expenses is 72%, which is under 25%, and we are just past three quarters of the way through the year. So he is on target to come in under, but not by much. I just don't know if he's sitting on a bunch of bills. Right. And so I think we need to I think we need I think we need to tell him that he I think we need to uh, suggest that if he does have bills he needs to get them in because now is the time to get that budget done right rather than what we've done a lot in the, before this year was have to make transfers around to cover the shortfall in that expense account. I know he got a big bump this year in fire expenses. Mm. So I would hope that he has enough. But don't know. All right, so we want information on wages, chief salary, and we just wanted to confirm fire expenses. Everything else, I think we're good. Um, you know, he has all, oh, you know what's going to happen? I know what's going to happen. His testing and recertification account and his fixed asset accounts are fully depleted. Uh, so now that they're depleted, he's not going to ask for them to be topped up. He's going to start paying for things that would normally be paid for for those accounts by expenses. And he's going to burn through expenses. That's what he's done every time I've looked into it. Yeah. And so therefore, it's like he's, we need to, we need to look into his, we need to talk to, we need, when we have him in, we also need to talk to him about what would be the right level of funding for his accounts. Because I think chronically underfunding them does not serve the town's needs. Agree. And so, I mean, I know we've been bumping it up, but it is what it is. All right. So, a lot of so we got a lot to talk about fire. I, I would just leave fire. We'll talk about it that next time. Um, telephone contract. We're only half. We're half expended, and we're three quarters of the way through the year. Karen, are we paying less for telephones now that we redid the phone system Absolutely, here? Absolutely, yes, we're paying less. All right. Yes. Well, then let's let's and Just reflect uh, that in the budget. Yes. Do we have good visibility and good certainty as to what our telephone expenses are going to be for the year? Well, um, there's I still know some that, question with some things. That Kelly had that figure. She she figured it out, and I think that's how she did the budget. So I don't know why. Oh, oh, she. she oh, okay. She. Well, she, yeah. We had eight. We have eight thousand dollars this year, and we have. She asked for seventy two hundred, but. She was provided all the phone bills because we did. And, yeah, and we've out. we've used. I mean, maybe maybe they're late billing us, and the the, the expenditure only reflects the. Um, well, we're definitely saving money with the with the town hall phones. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Okay. I mean, it's like it's so a it's an it's an eight hundred dollar reduction. There's not yeah. a lot of money to be had here, mm -hmm. so I'm not gonna. I'm. We'll come back to this time available, <laughs> but I don't I don't think the amount of money here is worth us getting sidetracked. Yeah, please. All right, uh, and then let's see. Other now we got the inspectors. We got a got a cola for the uh, for the lead inspector um, next week. Uh, in two weeks, we're gonna have to talk about the retiring inspector. We don't want to let that slide too much, but not tonight. And let's see. The EMA stipend is going up by $700. Let's talk to Pete about that since he's the one to talk to. I don't yeah. know if he's marketing to market or if there's more de more duties Associated landing on that it. position. Yeah. I, I just, it, it's going up, so I want to understand. If it, if it makes sense, it makes sense. And then, and then the gap between advisory and select board is twenty-six thousand dollars. But I think most of that is twenty thousand of that is the adjustments we made to police, because advisory's recommendation was based on level funding, because that's what was requested of them. And so my request to advisory is to um, is to look at what we're recommending, and consider supporting that. Um, just based, and if you need more information, uh, yeah. let us know. But okay. I, I I'd like to have advisory's concurrence on that. All right. What do you what do you 
Um, yeah. After after this, I will yeah, send you send a status. I will send you a snapshot of our budget document, okay. and then that way you can look at it, and that will give you a chance to look at what we're looking at and get there. And if I can figure out a way, understand how we can share it with you in a way that you can touch what you need to touch and not no, touch a, what we don't want you touching, yes. then I will do that because then you can update your advisory numbers whenever you see fit. Okay, so because that's what I would love it to be is for you to just tell us what your numbers are by adding them into the spreadsheet. Okay, so if you go to your manage protection, you can unlock certain cells. Yeah. So if you highlight certain cells, I'll be able to yeah. just touch those. And, yeah. and my thought is I would, I would, yeah, I don't know what Kelly locked. My thought is I would lock everything that we have numbers in and leave the stuff off to the right as, as scratch space. Yes. I don't know if she only unlocked that I, that advisory column. Yeah, okay. she did. So I had no like scratch space in the other one. I'll so. give you scratch space. Yeah, so I was like, ah, I need like scratch space to work off. <laughs> Gotcha. All right. Um, schools. I think we, I think we understand schools, and that at the moment we're gonna we're gonna let it ride and let the town and let the town have its say. Well, the, uh, I don't think we really. Fundamentally, we could go back to the school committee and ask them to shave. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When we yeah and. Is is, is that. And, and my assumption is what we got back was no because it's special ed requirements. Yes. The, I do know that the, the school budget, I, I was uh, talking, I talked to the, the school board and Deb Boyd and Dr. Hosterman um, about the budget. And my understanding is that they, they have two positions that were funded by grant money that they, the grant money is ending in fiscal year 24. It was basically like ARPA, and they're yeah, and yeah. they're and they're look and they they were looking to continue them on, as uh, but carried on the budget from the uh, but not funded by grant anymore. And so and I did and when the revenue numbers didn't when the revenue numbers didn't look as good because the there was an error in there, I did give them a heads up that we may need to come back to them. And they were so. Did so they, 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 did they, they have were, a reason for the like the change in the transportation costs? New con, new contract. New contract. This year. Twenty-five is a new three-year contract, so it's jump, it's jumping up. Yeah, and why does advisory have it? Okay, advisory level has funded. It level funded, and it's like. Oh, I didn't notice that. Um, yeah, I didn't notice that either. All right, so. So if you guys was that intentional that. or was that? No, it was not intentional. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we, it's supposed to be 50325 yeah. yeah. Is that a clerical error? Yes, that's correct. I see, okay, that's, I see, that's fine. I see, no, I see. I made plenty of those, Sarah, so don't. don't I see 50219. Yeah, but. If, oh, all right, 50219, you know? Yeah. Right. But, but Sarah, if it's clerical error and advisory has asked for that, then I can update mine now because I yes. want to reflect what advisory has decided. Whereas if you say no, we approved the wrong number, I need to wait for you. But. So let me so let me update the number to reflect your uh, your will. There we go. And the same with expenses. The elementary school expenses you. Um, the number I had from you was level funded from fiscal year 24 and did not reflect their increase. Yes, but they're asking for 3.875, correct? Um, or no? Yes. Yes, 3.8. 3, 3. Yeah, 8. yeah the, the, number, the number I got from you with your recommended yes, amount it was, was... Yes, the, was the 3.570. Yeah, I didn't have the three, extra 350000 All right, so there we go. So, okay, so I will update that number also. Yes. And so now what I have for... And regional school assessment also. Let me see. Your you have the fiscal year twenty four number for regional school assessment also, rather than the fiscal year twenty five request. So it looks the, like. Um, what was the request? One point eight two three. No, it's I have one point seven eight nine five six six now. All right. What is it? One. One. Yep. Seven nine eight. Yep. Five six six. Thanks. Okay. All right. So. Oh, but that's the wrong cell. So there we go. So now advisory and uh, let's see. And my thought is the select board is now good with um, 
the request from the school. A total of 5.727153. Yes, we have to sign the same thing. I just, I also just popped into the F125 for Zoom Cola. I just messed with your formula and did 40 hours times 2040 for the highway superintendent salary. Since mm -hmm. That's what we voted. Yep. So now you've got a proper number in there. It made it pop up about two thousand dollars from what you had. Yeah, I got it. Okay. That pushes things up, but it yeah. does. But it is what it is. And yeah. We're getting a backup water superintendent for the same. Yeah, money. that was and that, that's that was that was going to cost us money. And uh, I had a loose comment with Don Taft about that. I mean, should water put in for any of that? I think that's one of those things that sorts itself. I mean, it's net, it's, it's net, net no change. It's just, yeah. it's, uh, it's one of those. My thought is, is that our water, our water isn't self-funded. So yeah, they, 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 they use the funds from the water department to pay for capital improvements to the water system. Mm -hmm. But we, the town pay the water superintendent's salary mm -hmm. and none of the salaries come from the water monies. Interesting. So um, if we were to move, if we money. were, no, if we were to move to a self-funding model similar to the ambulance, then we would have to actually get charged by our own water department for our access to our hydrants. Mm -hmm. And it turns into an accounting goat rodeo. Interesting. Yes, that's. I can see that. I thought I, I, I thought the water revenues went into the. Um, I thought they went into general revenues. Uh, they do well. And so therefore they and that there just wasn't enough you know, revenue I, for them to be self funding. No, especially well, not with, no, especially we, not with capital. Our our water goes. I'm not sure, but there is. I don't think our water goes into general revenues. I think our water goes into water revenues. But our water department is not fully funded under whatever mass general law would make them a separate yeah. entity. Yeah. Uh, in in local receipts, there's $156,000 charges for services water. Right. Yeah. So I think that's the water department revenue. Right. But and that's so that's why they that that's why I'm saying though that they that water department wouldn't necessarily fund it. No. I mean, I I think effectively, they're their receipts yeah. do go into a separate account. That's what we're pulling the capital improvement for the water funding out of. Really? Because because we are the that hundred fifty six thousand dollars is showing as general revenue, and therefore it's it's reducing the levy. It doesn't look like it's going into a special account. That money's not going to special account. It may not be the water revenues, but some or portion some portion of what they take in okay. does. I know that I know there is a water capital account. I was not. Clear but we don't put. We, ne we never put money into it. Well, I mean, we put money into it, but it's transferred out of. It's a transfer. It's not a. I wonder. I wonder if that's a. Uh, if part of the revenues are sent to general fund and part of it's sent to capital. It could be. And it, that may be where it's it's divided. It's got some the water surplus account. Yes, that's what it's been called. So some. Some amount of what they take in goes to the water surplus account. Okay. I don't know what all the accounts. Are. Yeah, and it, it's like and that's and that's fine. But some some of it does go to the general fund, which right. offsets the cost of the operating of the water department. It pays for the water superintendent, pays for some their expenses. Well, yeah, the, I mean, it, in it, in an it, in an indirect manner, yes. Yes, yes, it's but not. They it's, are not self funded. They are not self funded, and those those water revenues are not. Encumbered Earmarked. against water department yeah, expenses. They're not, they're it's general earmarked. revenue, and it helps pay for the water department part of the budget. Correct. All right. So I would say at this point, it's probably not a big enough deal to make it worthwhile. If it turns like, uh, if it turns out to be, we can revisit it next year. Mm -hmm. It's it's just it's one of those. I don't want to spend all the effort and find out. Yeah, it's about two thousand dollars a year. Right. Well, and if he comes in as a if he comes in for water purposes, it would get charged in the water account. Mm-hmm. Just not his regular salary. Mm-hmm. 
So, all right, so let's see. So we've got a, a advisory's recommendation is 418607. The 4% uh, COLA number we have is 426742, which is an $8,000 difference. Where are you talking? Uh, uh, I'm looking at uh, Highway, Public Works. Since we, since we were talking about that. So did you guys, Sarah, have Highway Super at the 75 because? We had it at the 73,000 because it was decided that we did not, we didn't want to give him the 79,000, whoever he, she, whoever the superintendent mm -hmm. would be. All right, well, as, as we, <laughs> so we, we have hired, so we have hired so them it, at that cut. new, we have hired them at that new rate, so. Okay. So it's just, and it's just one of those, I think we got a good candidate. So in a, yeah. And, and so, and. So in, we, a, in a labor market where you can't find a human being with a CDL that actually wants to pick up a shovel, we were going to cut the pay on the superintendent for a working superintendent that we couldn't even get at qualified applicants for. And, and who had a, has a water operator license. It's like, I think that, I think this is the best deal the town's going to get in a long time. Yeah. I, I don't mind standing in front of town meeting and explaining that line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it doesn't so, work, like you said, we like, find yeah. a new one. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk mm -hmm. to them on yeah. Tuesday mm -hmm. to see right. if we can revoke to get it to the 79,000. All right. Eight, it's there's a new number 81600. Oh, oh, 79 was what we were budgeting. Yep, he came in a little above what we budgeted, okay. but with all that he brought, we decided that it was worth it. Okay, so what's the new number? 81,600. Okay, all right, and then snow and ice, we're just uplifting ice weight, the wages. Cemetery is what am I missing here at cemetery? Sorry, I've got a, oh, cemetery improvements. That's my problem. One second, I have a calculation error, and it's fixed. There you go. Yes. And so we are a th we are less than $1,000 above uh, advisory. Advisory was 33200 We're at 34065 and I think that is all on. Public, that's all on wages. And public works total is ten grand difference. Yeah, and I, I think that's all. I think that's primarily the the water superintendent and the difference in colas. Yeah. So I, I think I think we are effectively in alignment here. There's nothing unusual here. Um, uh, board of health. Board of health agent. Yes. I think that's a. Um, <clears throat> We should in we should in, we should discuss. I, I can dis, I can discuss this with Maureen offline, but she may want to discuss it with the board. Um, from my discussion, she they want a board of health agent. They say it's not going to affect the tax rate. I have talked to Kelly and the accountant about this, and because this is a new position, we cannot offset the expenditure with any expected revenue. We need to establish a track record of revenue for this position in order to put it on the. In order to count, in order to project it as revenue, and so therefore, it's going to cost us additionally. The board of health has a revolving account that, to my mind, would be the perfect place to pay for this health agent. The fees collected by the health agent goes to the revolving account, and then pays for them to do their work. And so zero so, that out, or so my thought is, is that we we should be talking to the board of health and explaining to them that. If it, it, that in order to achieve their goal of not impacting the tax rate with this position, the revolving account, using the revolving account to receive the monies that the health, that the uh, that they collect, and then to pay the cost of this person, makes sense. There are also historically we haven't spent a lot of money on this position. Like I think um, Kel I, Kelly's notes said, like we had, I'm confident it was less than a thousand. I want to say it was less than seven hundred. Board of Health, not Board of Health Transfer Station. So we can use the revolving account for that? That was, that was my understanding, and... If it's legal to use the revolving account for that, I don't object. Okay. 
I will, um, I will consult with Lori on that. And uh, my recollection is that Lori was concurrent that the that the revolving account was the right place. But I'll. And then we that. zero that out. Or? And if if that's the case, then we would uh, talk to the Board of Health and say we're not going to fund this from the in the operating budget. We recommend if you want to hire this person, you use the that you use the revolving account. And if they need a little seed money to get started, we can negotiate that. Um, but my thought is is that that. There might be some money in that revolving account to get them started anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know where that is right now. Again, Lori could tell us that. But I think that that is the, that is the better way to achieve what the Board of Health wants. And if it fizzles, then it doesn't impact the budget. If they need to use that person a lot, then they're bringing in a lot of fees from what they're doing and from their inspections, and it covers their cost. So why are we recommending? I'm sorry, and I moved on to the next thing because I really do want to go on. Um, it looks like we didn't do anything with the transfer station, which is all well and good. Um, why are we recommending 4200 when advisory agreed to the close to the higher requested number for the Council of the Aging to get a more hours on their senior director? Um, that's probably a that's probably I would call that a clerical error. It's got wages next to it, so it's just it, it reflects just the cola on. uplift, okay. rather so, than so the. So should I just copy over advisory's number and we'll agree with them? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I'm good with that for now. My my one. Yeah, it's like just part of part of me saying, yeah, the budget's tight. We could come back if the budget's tight. We can come back to it if we need. Because you just copied that number over, it just. Um, change that cell. What's that? You copied that number over, it just changed that cell calculation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the council of right? aging on director, we, I got that math from doing, uh, they increased her hours. So I took uh, the 1957 that she makes and gave them the increase in hours. Mm -hmm. but they also asked for an increase in pay. We did not give her the increase in pay. We just gave her the increase in hours. Right, but she resigned and now we're hiring a new person. So yes. I figure it's a good placeholder budget for hiring a new person. Yeah, I mean, yes. if it's a little, if it's an hour or two less than they wanted, I think, yeah. we, could, I think we can live with it. It's, it's a significant increase. Yeah. Yes. And so, I mean, and to a certain extent, I think they've demonstrated that they are growing the program and that they've earned more resources to, uh, to keep serving the, uh, the seniors in town. So I'm not opposed to it on principle. Okay. You know, I've been Is there a reason why we level funded the library director? The, okay, you hold on. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, did you change that number? Because that number is matches the the fiscal year twenty five request. Level funded would have been oh, sixty five thousand. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, okay. No, no worries. No. Nope. Because I'm going. I don't think I would have done that, but. And then for library for the library wages where. We're within, so, a we're within a thousand dollars, and I think that's again cola. That's the cola gap. Yeah. Um, everything else, I think we're good down to there, and then I don't think any of us to debt and interest and assessments are all fairly technical and not very discretionary. Yeah. It's like I'm advisory. Oh, I don't think we should pay our debt. It's like <laughs> we're, you're, we're we're smarter than that. Debt comes first. <laughs> yes. It's so, also a small enough number relative to the size of the budget that. Well, yeah. 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 Debt, debt is small. Assessments. But assessments, yeah. That's not so. That's, 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 that's pretty brutal. I was going to say group health and life in uh, Worcester County retirement. <laughs> it's like the increase every year. It's just like, oh my God. And that's a given. Yeah. Okay. They, okay. Not, there's not okay. much we can yeah. do there. Okay. Mm. Okay. And then the water department. The water department requested a healthy cola, which we have. Um, we're recommending 
then the, the number I have is a is a consistent four percent with the thought that we can always discuss it. But I thought a consistent COLA was the right starting point for today tonight's discussion. Yep. So is water requesting that because of the labor market for water folk? No, that's a, that's that's an inflation driven request. They um they're they're if you go to the the water detail tab, uh -huh. they break down like what the cola was in twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four, and I think their intention is that the uh, they're trying to fiscal, catch up. fiscal year twenty five is they're trying to get all caught up. Mm. Is is what that number intends is is what they requested, and. Well, that sounds nice. I don't think there's room in the budget for that. Mm. Or at least there's not room in the budget I'm comfortable recommending for that. Right. If the town, if the floor wants to increase that, then we'll increase it. As evidenced by our town clerk last year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Er. And that brings us to the end of the operating budget. Okay. Uh, did I miss the thing on technology with the website? Um, well, we technology was we sort of glossed over technology. Okay. If you want to talk about the website, we have a specific agenda item for that, so we didn't miss it. But we can talk about that now because the the technology budget does have. It's Where is the technology budget? budget? It's near the end, second to last. When you bring up the list of tabs. Um, that this hamburger menu down there yeah. brings you the full list of tabs. Just scroll to the bottom. I'm just questioning if she had it in there. Um, she does. My recollection is she does. Like Civic Plus forcing an upgrade, annual fee estimate for a new website host. Yeah. Online. Oh, and that's permanent. So there's a line for new website migration and a line for new website hosting, mm -hmm. along with. The existing Civic Plus. Uh, for uh, for those who follow along at home, um, our current website vendor that supports the town of uh, town of Brook or what is it town of Brookfield MA .us? or no Brookfield, Brookfield MA .us. I always get that wrong. Um, the Brookfield MA .us site website the town uses is hosted by a company called Civic Plus. Civic Plus has um, Civic Plus has has given us what what we in sales call go away pricing. <laughs> they are, uh, and Beth knows the real world. <laughs> so, and so basically they're saying you can still be a customer, but it's going to cost you a whole lot more. When we're not interested in playing a whole lot more. Um, the contract with Civic Plus goes through the end of the calendar year. So we are, we don't have to be off them by the end of the fiscal year, but that is a summer fall project is to, and part, and so what we're discussing is in the budget is that we are, there is money in the technology budget for identifying the new vendor, planning the migration, and then a little bit of overlap period because we're gonna have to have that new site going and soft launch it and get all the kinks worked out before we move on to, before we um, end, before our civic contract uh, services end on December 31st. Since they gave us the go away pricing, did they, are they at least gonna release our material? Because my understanding is sometimes they're difficult to get your stuff off of. I haven't I don't, had. No, I don't think anything on the website is all that difficult to get off because it's mostly stuff that we put up or just right. layout stuff we put in there. I don't think there's a lot of historical information or transaction information that we're due. Okay. Um, I would say, um, I would say that I am a, I am interested in maintaining uh, professional third-party hosting and not having someone's brother slap together a website for us. There is a lot of other basis. vendors. I mean, West Brookfield has a different vendor away. Well, mm -hmm. they already kind of are using their brother. Mm -hmm. And they went to a vendor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been, I haven't researched it. That's why I had it on the agenda. Is mm -hmm. it something you want me to re but, Please. But it was before I realized we're, I don't, how close do you think we are to a town administrator? <laughs> Ask me this time tomorrow night. All right. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I have a much better idea. I can work night. on it if need be, but 
Yeah, I'd rather I would, them. Uh, yeah. why, don't, why don't we wait and see? Because that, that could right. definitely be something for the new town administrator to work on, and that would, that would be a good get your feet wet kind of we project. Have all three, three interviews tomorrow. Or? All three yeah. are coming in. I've scheduled. I've set aside an hour on the agenda for each, so that we will not be rushed. Uh, so it's we'll be here. We could be here until nine fifteen. <laughs> Okay. So, so maybe at the very beginning of the meeting, we'll move to uh, extend to at least nine fifteen. Okay. I do have a quick question about it about that. So, are you going to look into not using my town government anymore? My town no, government is separate. separate. My town government is for meeting notices and postings. It is not different a, vendor altogether. It, it is, it, and it's most it's it's volunteer. I don't think it costs us anything. Yeah. So yeah. okay. Because the reason why I ask is like okay. So I'm going to compare it to Spencer. So Spencer, we upload. All of our agendas, all of our minutes to our website, and that counts as. And our I, I and I believe they do they use Civic Plus because that is a feature of Civic Plus that we just don't have I in don't our know, contract. I can find out what we use. Mm -hmm. I can um, I can yeah, look I, right I, now. I know. Yeah, so I didn't know. So I just didn't know if like we were gonna if we were gonna continue using my town government and keep the website, or if we were gonna switch everything over to the website and get that's, rid of my town government. I I think that's. At the moment, that's not the. Yeah, they're using. It, they're open to it, but they, they're using the bundled product, product that does the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and who's there is Spencer does. And they use Civic Plus. Okay, but that's probably an extra module. I'd be interested oh. to see what they're spending. It looks like they're probably spending quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They they get the fancy with. Oh, yeah, it looks like so, they yeah. got <laughs> they they got the good one. Yeah, everyone has a login. Like I can go in and edit anything. And it's good, don't get me wrong. No, it I mean, is. You know, yeah. For the money, money you're spending, key. it's very turnkey and nice. Yeah. And but it's a lot more money. than what we're yeah. Well, the only expense for us to go up to that is that 20000 The ongoing is probably between five and eight. Five and eight hundred? Or thousand? Five and eight thousand. Okay. But it would probably consolidate. The reason to go to that is it consolidates a lot of other things that we're paying for. Okay. Like. Well, we're, I think we're not considering permit, uh, not permitized, we're not considering Civic Plus because right. where the pricing is going. Yes. So, I mean, I guess technically if they are forcing everyone to go up to the tier where things like that are included and we were sort of looking at it anyway, I would um, say we'd be remiss in not just verifying that it's, uh, whether or not it's a good deal. I didn't think it was. Because might, it might have been just a hey, the price is going up, we're staying away. My. My, that was Keller's opinion. Mine was, it's pretty good that they got. Yeah, I mean, it's like if if they're if they're if they're just raising their prices for what we got, it's like okay, that's one thing. If they're saying we're getting rid of that lower tier and they're you getting, have to start at the higher tier with more services, then it's a question of do those services make sense for right. us to offer? Right. And it's like, and that's and I'd say we'd be remiss in not looking into it. Yeah. It may, it may turn out no, it's not worth it, or it may say, yeah. oh, there's a great value here. Right. But. I think we should. I think we should investigate it, whether that's you, Brad, or whether it's the, uh, yeah. the town administrator. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they they can do all their payments through there. It's, I don't think it's through Unibank. It's probably all through Civic Plus. No, it's through UK. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. So that. But, but you can pay your building inspector. You can pay your plumbing inspector. You can pay anything. Yeah. Right. So. What I would what I would like is if we're done going through the budget, I would like a motion to approve. Uh, <laughs> before that, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get there. Let me get there. Because I will I will take a motion from the board to approve the uh, to, for the for the select board to recommend a budget to town uh, at. Ten million five hundred seventy-seven thousand three hundred sixty dollars and six cents, reflecting the document we have in front of us now. You have that motion. Okay. Second. All right. Thank you. Now, uh, just for discussion before we get there, the intention will be um, this will lock in our recommendation. We will have the opportunity to reconsider this. Um, I'll go through it. I'll scrub it. If we find any errors or any irregularities or something comes up in our discussion with Peter next week, we'll make edits as needed. But this is sort of a baseline budget and we'll make adjustments from there. Yeah. Karen, I will send you a copy of this document yes. that will uh, serve as a record of the meeting and uh, Sarah, I will also it's send you a copy of, of it. Yes. And so, uh, therefore, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing as there's none, all in favor of adopting the budget at 
uh, of recommending a budget to town meeting at $10,577,360.06. Say aye. 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 Thank you. Deb? Motion to adjourn. Yes. <laughs> Second. All in favor of adjourning at 9.40 p.m., please say aye. 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 And we're out of here. <laughs>